stage race taking place in the Western Cape of South Africa. The route takes in spectacular mountain ranges, picturesque coastline, rugged tracks and manicured bike trails. The route changes every year and this, the 19th edition, is a tough one. 648 kilometers and over 15 and a half thousand meters of climbing over the eight days. The teams of two, both pro and amateur, must work together to conquer this challenging race. Today's penultimate stage marks day seven on the Cape Epic and the course is relentless. With the overnight rain, the sandy clay trails are going to be waterlogged. This is a day to take care of the bikes and the body. The riders loop around the Lonesford estate and experience a real mix of forestry trails and single track. The 78 kilometer course has been slightly shortened due to the weather, but with this sawtooth profile, there is no respite. On the start line, Toyota Specialized 91 with Matt Beers and Chris Blevins in third overall, seven minutes and nine seconds off the pace. In second, Scott's Ram MTB Racing with two-time winner and 2016 Olympic champion Nino Schurter and Andre Frischnecht. And defending champions are Bea Liet Speed Company, Georg Egger and Lukas Baum are in the yellow jerseys for the first time, just one and a half minutes in the lead. As the gun goes, the men's elite riders have almost 500 kilometers of racing in their legs, and today it's going to be brutal. There's a lot of single track, making it difficult to overtake, and the surface is treacherous. By the 31 kilometer mark, Scott's Ram MTB Racing are over two minutes behind the leading group of Toyota Specialized 91 and the yellow jersey leaders, Obea Liet Speed Company. These two teams battle relentlessly at the sharp end of the race. At the 41 kilometer split, Scott's Ram MTB Racing are over three minutes behind the leaders, but continue to push. Disaster strikes for the leaders in the yellow jersey. Baum has drivetrain problems. The seconds are ticking by as they try to make the repair on the spot, but they're missing a jockey wheel. They have to return to the previous tech zone and replace the derailleur. Schurter and Frischnick eventually overtake the leaders and are given a bump in motivation. Beers and Blevins power on at the front and know that this is their time to make a dent in the overall and potentially win the stage. After two and a quarter hours, Scott Stram racing are back in the virtual leader's jersey. However, Egger and Baum thrive in these challenging situations and are fighting back to recover as much time as possible. Beers and Blevins keep the tempo high all the way to the finish at Lawrenceford. They cross the line in three hours, 26 minutes and 49 seconds and wait for the other teams to see what their GC standing will be. Scott Sram Racing followed just over four minutes later and Bulls Mavericks almost seven minutes after the leaders. The yellow jerseys have suffered today and crossed the line more than 11 minutes after the winners in eighth place. They lose the jersey and drop to third in the overall by just over five and a half minutes. On the podium for the first time at the Sapsa Cape Epic, Alvin Lakata and Axel Rudel Cortina for Bulls Mavericks in third. In second, Scott Sram MTB Racing and the winners today by just over four minutes, Toyota Specialized 91, bumping them up to second in the overall, just over one and a half minutes down. The yellow leaders jerseys go back to Schurter and Frischnecht for the final stage seven tomorrow. On the women's elite start line, 91 Songo Specialized with defending champions Sofia Gomez Viafan and Katharina Nash in third. In second, Efficient Infinity Insure with Kim Lacourt and Vera Loza. And the leaders by almost 14 minutes, South African duo of Amy Wakefield and Candice Lill for e4.net Seattle Coffee Co. As the start gun fires for the CM.com women's elite category, the weather isn't letting up. This year's Cape Epic has been one of the wettest and it's taking its toll on the riders. We've seen some phenomenal racing of the sharp end with e4.net Seattle Coffee Co. going into orange on stage one and managing the race from then on. Second and third overall changed place on stage four with efficient Infinity Insure overtaking 91 Songo Specialized. Wakefield and Lil are in a controlling position with a 14 minute lead. They tail the court and Lossa through a small river across the track. A rock from Lossa flicks into the path of Wakefield and she hits it hard. A puff of air and it's a catastrophic puncture. They do everything to repair it, but the rim is cracked and the tire won't seal. The South African duo remain calm and make critical decisions. Wakefield rides on the rim to the next tech zone for eight kilometers. 20 minutes are lost and the virtual leader's jersey goes to efficient Infinity Insure with Le Court and Loza. And that pair don't look back. They know something has happened, but push on through the Lawrenceford wilderness. They have designs on a hat trick of stage wins. Gomez, Viafan and Nash have approached the stage with a fresh attitude. They grind up the technical climbs and fly down the rugged descents. The team seem to be gelling well today. 
The women of the day are Kim LaCourt and Vera Lossa. They take victory on stage six with a time of four hours, 30 minutes and two seconds. They make it a three-peat of stage wins and cross the finish line completely soaked but elated. Sofia gomez Viafan and Katharina Nash finish in second place. It's another podium finish for Team 91 Songo Specialized after a hard day in the saddle. Canada Vas Arabes Greta Steinberg and Monica Calderon cross the finish line in third place for the second time in a row. The overall leaders in the mud splattered orange jerseys, e4.net, Seattle Coffee Co's Amy Wakefield and Candace Lill cross the line 39 minutes after the winners and lose the jersey. They are now 25 minutes behind efficient Infinity Insure and just over two minutes ahead of 91 Songo Specialized. The CM.com women's stage podium has Canada Vas Arabe on the bottom step. In second, 91 Songo Specialized. And today's winners, after one of the toughest stages ever, are Vera Loza and Kim LaCourt from Efficient Infinity Insure. Team Efficient Infinity Insure move into the overall lead and will start the grand finale tomorrow in the Orange Leaders jersey. A week after the journey began at Mirandal Wine Estate with a prologue, we are leaving Lawrenceford Wine Estate on the grand finale that takes the riders to Val de Vie. Hello and welcome to the 2023 APSA Great uh, Cape Epic uh, grand finale. Lawrenceford Wine Estate to Val de Vie, 80 kilometers and around 2,300 meters of climbing and some brutal conditions again due to some heavy overnight rain. The riders are being put through the ring at this week and uh, those medals at Val de Vie will be richly deserved and hard-earned after this torrid tumultuous week that, that they have endured. The general classification is looking incredible. It has never been as close as this going into the final day in uh, the 18 previous editions of the Absa Cape Epic with uh, Nino Schurten and Andri Frischnick regaining the yellow jerseys on stage six at Lawrenceford when uh, Beers and Blevins took the stage win and Egren Baum lost over 10 minutes and find themselves out of the yellow jerseys that they wore on uh, Saturday morning and they're now in third, five minutes and 32 down. But Beers and Blevins, 132 down on the yellow jersey and it's all to play for on this final day going to Val de Vie. It is still up in the air as to who will be the champions in 2023. In the women's race, there was high drama at Lawrenceford with the uh, CM.com leaders going into stage six. Wakefield and Lil losing some 39 minutes due to a major mechanical and a cracked rear wheel for Amy Wakefield, which has seen Kim LaCourt and Vera Loss of Efficient Infinity Insure take the lead in this race by 25 minutes over Wakefield and Lil with 91 Songo Specialized Gomez Viafan and Nash now in third place. Those three head and shoulders above the rest in the CM.com women's general classification. But it has been a week of incredible drama. High wins in the Hermanus. The midweek time trial was a differential in the uh, general classification. And then the Queen's stage with rain and wind and the plenty of mud. And uh, the penultimate day at the Lawrenceford playing out in the most stormy conditions this race has seen for many, many years. 
So the final day, the grand finale, is uh, in many estimations perhaps the toughest we've seen for many years here at the Absa Cape Epic as they start at Lawrenceford. And it's a long drag up the fire roads to get to the saddle and climb away from the Helderberg Bowl. And you can bet that the teams wanting to make an impact today will use that as a launch pad. They plummet down through the uh, trails to Dornier and the first water point through uh, the lowest slopes of Stellenbosch Mountain. G-Spot Trail is legendary. And then across the Erste River at the Hungbrug, and then the climb up Botmus Kop, the day's second major challenge before they drop into the Banhoek Valley. And uh, that is the Toyota Tough section, the, ba the Botmus Kop climb. Lovely trails and descents here, but by this time, riders will be fatigued. There'll be mud all over the bikes, down to the deep end of the valley. Knickknacks is a seriously tough uh, technical climb. And then to Old Bethlehem Farm and the most amazing trails. A drag out as they head towards the Berg River and leave the Stellenbosch precinct, cross the Berg River through Ludus Magnus and then on to the finish here at Val de V. The uh, grand finale is uh, boiling up to be an absolutely fantastic day's mountain biking. And who will be the champions at the end of it all? And this is the way the uh, profile looks that saddle climb is uh, an early opportunity for a launch pad that dropped down to Dornier and that second climb at Botmus Corp you feel that, that the major protagonists will have been uh, sorted out by the time they got to their, get to there. So how is it going to pan out today? Well let's find out uh, what the thoughts and feelings are of those uh, leading riders from uh, the start line. Let's hear what their thoughts are. Tristan, you guys rode yourself into the top 10 yesterday. That's obviously a, a really good feeling going into Val de Ville. Yeah, yesterday we had a, it was an early day, but we had a good day. We finished seventh on the stage and moved to 10th on GC. So we just got better through the, through the epic and today is the last day. And support for your A team are on a final day like this with them lying in second, how important is that? Yeah, definitely important. I think they're gonna need all the help they can. So we'll see how it plays out and then, yeah, we'll see who goes first to Valdevi. And you obviously know the trails around Stellenbosch, uh, Paul, and into the Bangunk Valley pretty well. Are you excited for that? Yeah, I know. I know all these trails. That's, I think, a big advantage. You know what's coming up. I know what speed you can go on the trails. So, and it's amazing trails at Banuk and Portmanskop and G-Spot. And it's just such amazing trails. Enjoy it. Thank you so much. Alex, last day. It's quite a steep one, quite a tough one still. How do you prepare? How do you warm up for a day like this? Um, yeah, I mean, yesterday was a super tough day, the last two days actually. So now it's just trying to get the body warmed up and uh, ready, for, ready for the big climb ahead. And uh, it's definitely going to be dry from above today, but not from the bottom. How do you sort of deal with these kind of conditions? Um, I think it'll be important to uh, yeah, position yourself well. You don't want to be too far back um, in the bunch. So. As soon as you hit a puddle or a big uh, mud patch, then it goes crazy if you're too far back, so important to be in the front. Uh, and the battle for GC is pretty tight at the moment and, and all to play for. Could that potentially give you guys the opportunity of a stage win? Um, yeah, we'll see. I mean, they're still. I think it's still fairly open for the top GC team, so I think they will also give everything today, so I think it will be a hard one. Good luck. Thank you very much. Thanks. Chris Blevins, grand finale lying in second uh, all to play for today yeah absolutely um, it's a really special opportunity we have to you know give it everything we have and try to get 92 seconds so grateful to be in this position and um, we'll give it everything it's a super tough stage though uh, there's a lot of climbing over a fairly short distance yeah um, we've got those two climbs in the first 40k which we're glad we have them um, I think the harder the better for us, so, um, yeah. We look forward to seeing how it plays out. Thank you. Andre, in yellow, but not too big a margin, what do you expect from the racing up front today? Yeah, for sure it's going to be all out from the beginning, and I think the first climb will be crucial, and then after that uh, it's a bit of a gambling, uh, how we are placed in the group, but I think we have a really good chance to, to keep the yellow until the finish. And with the battle for GC fairly tight, uh, do you expect potentially a Dark Horse other team going for a stage win? Yeah, for sure that uh, could be, but uh, 
the last few days uh, everybody saw that there is three major teams that are always out front and I think these teams are going to be the strongest as well because we race for GC and yeah maybe there is another team coming I hope uh, they don't affect uh, the race but we'll see. All the best. Thank you. Jörg and Lucas all to play for today. Yeah, I mean, with the back against the wall, nothing to lose. Uh, we fight for the win, of course. Uh, let's make the impossible happen. And you now remember some of the trails from last year? How do you approach that? Yeah, um, actually, we did uh, some of the trails already in the preparation. I mean, maybe today is the best uh, prepared stage so far with the prologue together. Um, yeah, we try everything. We look forward to seeing how it plays out. Yeah, thanks. Sophia, grand finale, how do you approach today after a long, tough week? Yeah, thank God. Uh, the trail to Valdivy is like right here, right now, today. Uh, no, we're just going to play it safe and uh, make sure we get in one piece. And hopefully an uneventful day means a good day. Enjoy it. Thank you. Well, the thoughts of the riders ahead of today's stage. And this is the start from earlier this morning. And it's wonderful to welcome uh, alongside me a five-time winner of this uh, event. She's never lost uh, whenever she's come to ride the Absa Cape Epic, a former world cross-country and marathon champion. Annika Langfell, mm -hmm. nice to have you with us once more. And what a day we've got in store for us today. Yeah, it's uh, one of the most exciting final days I've ever witnessed in my, in my time around the race. If one were to, to write a script, uh, how to, to have the perfect uh, and the most thrilling final day, this would be it. And the man who knows uh, all that history is uh, Neil Gardner sitting alongside us here. It's, it's never been this close, eh, Neil? Well, I would agree with, uh, with all that we've been talking about. And uh, it is an absolute showdown today, a final showdown. And three teams are in, the, in contention for the yellow jerseys in the men's category. In the women's category, we could arguably say that it's more or less sealed up with 25 minutes advantage that Kim LeCourt and Vera Lawza have. But in the men's category, as we said, an absolute showdown. Scott Stram, MTB Racing in yellow. They are in a commanding position in the race. But uh, Toyota specialized 91. Matt Beers only 92 seconds. We heard Christopher Blevins talk about it in seconds. He didn't notably say one minute and 32 seconds. He said 92 seconds. So it just goes to sh just a little bit of indication of the mindset. He's broken it down to seconds. And in third place, a disastrous day yesterday, Orbia Lead Speed Company. They looked the strongest on the day. They look looked extremely strong all week, in fact. Five minutes and 32 seconds down. What we've just been watching there is the climb up the, towards the saddle and now the descent. And what uh, transpired there was that the uh, uh, Toyota Specialized 91 got away from uh, the Scott Sram team and from Obia Elliott Speed Company and went through the Dornier water point, which is there now, uh, the first of the uh, water points, with around about a 30 second lead over the chasers. And uh, that chases uh, Scott Stram, Nino Scherter, and Andre Frischneck, who was suffering at the top there. Obia uh, Liet Speed Company and one of the uh, Singer Racing and one of the Toyota. Specialized 91 riders, and that's Tristan Norkier. Key to this pair, Blevins and uh, Beers, is uh, his presence close to the uh, to these two. Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, if this uh, team here were to have a mechanical, they will have a backup rider just uh, not too far away. And uh, you can see that the riders uh, have separated, so they will most likely get a time penalty towards uh, yeah the end of today. But you know, all eyes on their uh, primary team. Well, there is the chase from uh, Obia Speed Company racing with Singer Racing. And as I said, the one rider in the red helmet is Tristan Nokia. Adrian Boishas, his uh, partner, uh, left behind. And uh, he apparently was suffering a little bit overnight. But this is the race. Georg Eger and Lucas Baum. Baum was suffering at the top of the uh, 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 the climb up this towards the saddle. He certainly emptied his tank yesterday and it was his bike. Uh, they had to replace the derailleur on uh, yesterday, so uh, that's where they lost the huge amount of time and the overall uh, race lead as they plunge down the, the famous G-Spot trail here in Stellenbosch. It is absolutely glorious. The men are there. To the women's uh, start, and uh, well, again, a tumultuous day yesterday. Amy Wakefield 
breaking a rim, hitting a rock, and uh, they lost 39 minutes and the overall lead after a race, a week of high drama as it is for them. Uh, they are now out of the uh, orange jerseys and in the red on loan. Well, they had what we thought was a comfortable margin over their nearest rivals at 13 minutes and 55 seconds. And with losing 39, just under 39 minutes on yesterday's stage with the travails they had with their rims, they ended up at the end of the day on general classification 25 minutes and 12 seconds down, 27 minutes down, 27 and 20 seconds down, 91 Songo specialized, Villafana and Nash. Well, Vera Loss and Kim Lacorte of Efficient Infinity Insure have had an extraordinary week and uh, they are now in the, the pound seats as cm.com uh, race leaders. Yeah, definitely. And uh, what, what a race we have had in the women's category as well. I mean, nobody saw this, this unfold and it's just uh, mind-blowing that, uh, you know, the swap of jerseys, uh, the yellow leaders jerseys has now been on the, uh, in, uh, on the shoulders of uh, three different teams. So, yeah, it's really highly dramatic uh, week. And we can see here the 91 Sango Specialized team with Katarina Nash and Sofia. Nash is still, ah, she's hurting. It's been a long week. And we heard from the team that uh, she's uh, just not, you know, the batteries are just not uh, recharging overnight. And um, you don't want to start a stage not fully, fully loaded. So, yeah, she's uh, definitely feeling, uh, getting a, a first uh, impression of what a beast uh, the, the Absa baby actually is. And it most certainly is. Now we are live, and this is uh, just outside Stellenbosch on what a section is called the Bergpatt. And uh, they have come through G-Spot, and they're all together now. Beers and Blevins have been caught by Egger and Baum. Now the time differential, which we'll keep referring to here, 5 minutes and 32 between third place Egger and Baum and first place Scott Sram. Between second place, Beers and Blevins and Scott Stram, it's one minute and 32. That was at the start of today. So Beers and Blevins have less to do that, 92 seconds. They would like try and uh, eke that out and get ahead of uh, Scott Stram. They've got to limit their, their losses. And again, here, yeah, Blevins and Beers just uh, easing a little bit away from Egger and Baum. Baum really is suffering today. And here are the yellow jerseys. Schurter and Andre Frischnick. It's key that uh, Schurter looks after Frischnick today if they want to retain this jersey. Yeah, definitely. And those 92 seconds, I mean, that's that's all that we really focus on today. Uh, it's hardly unlikely, well, it's n never, nothing is ever impossible in this race, but it's hardly unlikely that Speed Company Racing will be able to actually get a gap and go ahead of uh, so, uh, Specialized, Toyota Specialized 91. Uh, they have to go be ahead, uh, I think, almost six minutes. And, uh, you know, every every meter, every kilometer that we get closer to the finish line is, you know, less opportunity to, to actually do that. So uh, I think the most dramatic story of today and all focus will be on those 92 seconds between uh, Matt Beers and Christopher Blevins and the Scott Schramm team. Absolutely. Uh, Egger and Baum, we know famously uh, rampaged to victory last year on the final day. Uh, they uh, were 2 minutes and 45 seconds behind uh, Stosik and uh, Sievolt of Cannon Northwave going into the final day. But there was illness in that camp and uh, also the uh, glint in the eye and uh, the incentive of winning the, the stage and with it the overall for uh, Egger and Baum and they uh, did just that. But the uh, circumstances are a little different uh, this year because Beers and Blevins really have been in a rich form after Blevins suffered on the stage one and they lost eight minutes. Who would have thought that now they are uh, this close to glory here at Val de Vie? That's just an idea of where they're coming around the edge of a Stellenbosch mountain at Stellenbosch town in uh, the uh, distance there. And uh, they've already progressed uh, a long way through this route. They are going so fast. Well, we saw earlier on in the stage, um, Lucas Baum was struggling a little bit as they were climbing up to Hondaput and um, the, at the Waterford Dam time check. They managed to... Uh, regain him regain uh, the power that we've seen from them over the uh, over the last week and they've got back in touch with the uh, specialized uh, team and the singer racing team they're not looking like they're going to interfere with the overall general classification they were sensitive to that um, when they uh, when they were uh, up front in the last stage we saw them on stage uh, five uh, racing uh, uh, in the front pack but it looks like very much like it's going to be a battle between uh, the Scott SRAM team and Toyota 
Spe uh, 91, Toyota Specialized 91, and Matt Beers and Christopher Blevins already have a one minute and 10 second advantage over Schurter and Frischknecht. Schurter and Frischknecht are losing time hand over fist with the cooperation of the Orbia Lead Speed Company Racing and Matt Beers and Christopher Blevins. They only have a few seconds on the virtual lead right now. If the race were to stop right, right now, yellow jerseys would still retain those uh, those Chiveta leaders jerseys, but time is uh, time is getting short. They'll need to hold on to whatever they can. They need to pull out whatever power they can get out of their legs and uh, save the day because it's coming down now to just a matter of a few seconds. That it is. They've gone through the Eerste River, which flows through uh, Stellenbosch from the Jongesuk Mountains, and a little uh, suburban drag before they hit the uh, low slopes of uh, Botmas Korp. And on the descent uh, out of the Bergpatt section, this is uh, the uh, Scottsram MTB pair. So they are really fighting for every second, this pair. It is the showdown that uh, we... Uh, never predicted at the start of the week because uh, you just cannot predict uh, what has happened and uh, you could not have scripted uh, this week's drama uh, any better to set up a final day like this truly amazing as uh, the world's finest mountain bike go racer in nino Schurter is uh, having to fight desperately and look after his partner this is a true test of not just skills stamina endurance it's about relationships it's about reading uh, uh, your, your partner and knowing how to look after him uh, at uh, under real stressful situations. And back to uh, the pairing of Beers and Blevins, they are doing exactly what they need to do to get back that 92 seconds that they have, the deficit they have over Scott Sram, and uh, still two, you could say, two major obstacles to go on the stage. Uh, they are almost approaching the 30 kilometer mark, there's 80 kilometers at the final destination. That's the uh, that's how far they have to go today in total, but 50 Ks to go still, two major obstacles all to play for. Plenty of water on those uh, trails. You can see the rain has come down heavily in uh, this part of the world. There'll be no puddles on this section as they head towards Botmas Corp. S the grand finale is bringing the drama here at the Absa Cape Epic. We're watching the uh, ride a little bit further down the uh, field. Enjoy the uh, trails of G-Spot. It is a legendary trail here in uh, Stellenbosch, uh, built years ago by Mark Gordon and still maintained by Mark Berms, Jumps, uh, and uh, you know it well, don't you, Annika? Yeah, it's uh, one of those trails that you, if you come here to ride your bike, uh, you always need to just uh, pay a visit to this, uh, this area here because it's, uh, it's very good. Good fun riding and the trails here are just amazing. Just outside, in fact, it's almost in the suburbs of uh, Stellenbosch on the slopes of Stellenbosch Mountain that presides over this uh, little trail. And there are lots of spectators out there, wonderful to see, and this is all part of the uh, Winelands uh, Trail Network, and uh, it's an opportunity to uh, showcase these uh, wonderful trails. And that's where they've come from. That little gap uh, between the mountains is uh, where they've uh, come through the Eden Forest and across the top and then down onto this uh, beautiful G-Spot trail. Meanwhile, our leaders are heading up uh, to Botmos Corp, which is another little section that uh, will test them. It's a climb with plenty of uh, rough trail and uh, steep, steep uh, gradients to deal with. But the fun is to be had here. And uh, to the unsuspecting, uh, you've got to be have your wits about you. If you haven't ridden this trail before, and many in this uh, field would not have uh, perhaps ridden it, you've got to uh, you've got to be a little bit uh, cautious because some of the jumps uh, can uh, surprise you. But uh, dealing comfortably with them. Oh, here at Val de Vie at the grand finale. Here's a little introduction 
to the beauties and delights of mountain biking for these uh, very, very young uh, children. So cool to uh, bring uh, the next generation into the sport. Well, we wouldn't say this is next year's field at the Amsterdam, <laughs> but certainly inspiring the young riders, and uh, this could well be the future of mountain biking in 2050. Absolutely, these youngsters getting inspired by uh, the Apsike Pepek. There we go. You'll be on uh, these uh, trails in around uh, 20 years' time. It'll be wonderful to see. They'll turn right and then they head across to the uh, Bergpark Trail, these uh, riders, on a day that uh, has delivered beautiful sunshine and uh, clear skies thankfully after some heavy heavy rain over the last uh, 36 hours Stellenbosch and it surrounds the playground right now for the Absa Cape Apex grand finale as they move from Lawrenceford at the start in the Helderberg Bowl to Val de Vie in Nepal. We are an hour and 18, 19 minutes into the day's racing this morning and we've seen high drama already as uh, the leading uh, group heads up Botmas Corp. It's a steep climb and this is the leading group with uh, Beers and Blevins from a Toyota, 90, a Toyota Specialized 91 uh, Beer Liet Speed Company are with them, as are Singer Racing, who are not involved in the general classification at all. They're in 27th place, but they are he hunting a stage win perhaps here. But uh, the key absentee from this group is the yellow jersey of Nino Schurter and Henri Frischnick. They started today with a 1 minute and 32 second lead over Beers and Blevins, who are in this group. And when last we checked, they were over a minute behind them as of now. So uh, the drama is unfolding right now. And that lead, that yellow jersey, hangs in the balance at around about 1.20. This is a manual timing. We don't have official timing yet, but approximately by our estimation and from our... Uh, on the ground okay, calculating it at around about one minute and 20 seconds it absolutely hangs in the balance for Nino Schurter and Andre Frischkinecht as they head up the Botmans Corp uh, climb they've passed through the 30 kilometer mark and uh, they are climbing up Botmans Corp it's uh, not the first time we've used this climb at the Absa Cape Epic and uh, in the early part of the climb it's a uh, forestry district uh, roads and mostly and then it turns into single track near the top. The surface is pretty good, it's uh, firm. And after the rains that we've been seeing, it'll be, uh, it'll be nice, and, uh, nice and firm, not too dusty after the long summer we've had. It's around about a six kilometer ascent with an 8% average yeah. gradient, which is uh, perhaps a, would be a challenge for uh, the likes of Andrew Frischenek, who has been struggling on the steeper slopes uh, today on the earlier section of the race. And we can see exactly here that the Toyota Specialized 91 with Matt uh, Beers and Christopher Blevins, they did speak about that the harder, the longer the stage would be, the better for them. And uh, the biggest part of, uh, of the, 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 the hard uh, climbing is actually here at the beginning of today's stage. And that's why we will see them put, a, on, put in so much effort to really, really, really just uh, open up uh, as big uh, a gap as possible here on these long and steep and hard climbs. Yeah, I mean, it, it, the, the camera doesn't do justice to just how steep these, uh, these uh, trails are. And you can see from the riders how much effort they're putting in here and how they're bent over the uh, handlebars. It'll flatten out a little bit here and then it'll head up again. Uh, steeply to uh, the right. It really is a tough, tough uh, climb, the bottom of Corp climb. It's a tough climb indeed. It could end up being a tactical climb too because we see Christopher Blevins on the front driving the pace as hard as he possibly can. It's not just to get time off uh, Scott Sram. They know that they'll get full cooperation from the Orbi Elite Speed Company team, but what Blevins seems to be doing right now, staying in the front, he knows full well that at some point this slope turns into a single track section. And if he's in the front, that could uh, halt any attacks from the likes of Baum and Egger. Now Baum and Egger have got a lot to gain. They are three minutes back off the time of Specialized. And uh, I think from, uh, from what we've seen throughout the week, 
Mega and Baum from Orbia Spe um, Liet Speed Company are keen for the win. They're going all in. They're only interested in the yellow jerseys. They've kind of got the third spot overall. That's kind of more or less cemented in the position that they are. They will want to go on the attack. They'll want to launch a full, full attack on uh, the race and on the uh, team of uh, Blevins and Beers. But uh, Blevins very clever, keeping control of the front. And soon they'll be entering the single track section of the climb. And with only one obstacle to go after this, a slightly uh, lesser climb, you could say, up to the uh, up to the knickknacks section, there is uh, it's not quite as steep and less of an opportunity to launch an attack. So time is running out for Orbia Lead Speed Company as Christopher Blevins is taking charge of the front. Short section of single track. This uh, just uh, takes them away from what is perhaps the steepest gradient, that little road going up there. This short little section of single track pops out on the road again. Uh, and then they'll be back on the road for a little while longer. But yeah, it's a uh, key positioning here is important. Definitely. And um, I believe Chris, he's uh, after that uh, horrible day he had on stage one, the second day of the race, it seems like he's just getting stronger and stronger uh, every single day. And we can only speculate what kind of race we could have had uh, if it weren't for Chris having that dark, dark day. But that's part of the race. And you can see that all teams are, you know, it's just a matter of time before they, they have to handle some sort of issue. And uh, they had it on, on the, yeah, uh, the first real stage. And yeah. they've just been and chipping away. They yeah. lost eight minutes and yeah. eight seconds on that particular day. They were in the leaders' jerseys. They were in the in the yellow jerseys. And, of course, losing eight minutes. They thought their race was done. They were in 10th spot on overall GC. And as uh, soon as Christopher Blevins felt better on stage two, they rocketed up to fifth, then to fourth, then into third. And now they're in second spot on overall GC. And uh, quite, Luke, quite a thrilling day. Lucas Baum is really, really suffering today. Uh, he's having to dig so, so deep uh, to hang in here. We can see the expression on Lucas Baum. We saw him earlier really struggling uh, just to get uh, his legs warm, get his body into gear with, uh, with the, in the earlier slopes. But it looks like uh, he's certainly on the pace, but uh, doesn't look like he's going to be as keen for a long-range attack like we saw in 2022. Yeah, this is uh, more of these little sections of uh, single track linking the fire roads, all part of the Bunnell Conservancy trails, which is all part of the Winelands uh, trail network, which stretches from uh, Chrabo, where we were a couple of days ago. Or you can ride the trails all the way out to uh, Wellington um, with one uh, Winelands uh, trail permit, which is a really, really cool initiative that's uh, been launched here in the Western Cape over the last couple of years. This is the uh, yellow jersey pair. You know, Schurter and Andre Frischneck digging deep to try and uh, limit their losses. And this team is under so much pressure. Of course, they want to defend the jerseys. They want to, to really be the winner of this race. But, uh, yeah, right now they're almost riding a little bit blind in the dark. They know that their worst competitors who have to pull 92 seconds on them today to win the race and take the jerseys off their shoulders. They have to yeah, and I put in 92 seconds to them and they are up the front and they have really no clue. I mean, if the gap is opening up or if uh, they're catching, you know, if they change, if the gap is uh, getting smaller or bigger. So it's uh, such a stressful, you know, situation to be in right now. Well, they need to manage their efforts not to blow up and not to push too hard. They need to keep within their limits, but at the same time, not lose time. And it's a very fine balance for uh, Fresh Connect and Nino Schurter to uh, manage their efforts on this particular climb. It's got an 8% gradient. It's, uh, it's, it's steep. It kicks up to 10, 12, 15% at certain points. So they'll need to make sure they do, don't go too close into or too far into the red because they know there's uh, still a long way to go at the top of the last obstacle of the day. And uh, as they just before they descend the, uh, the knickknack section, and into the descent towards Valdeby, the grand finale, the Champs-Élysées of mountain biking. And uh, even at that very top section of the course, the, uh, well, the last uh, time check, around about the 49 kilometer mark, the second last time check, they still have quite a long way to go, th over 30 k's to go as they roll down into the finish. So Beers uh, and Blevins. Uh, it's Blevins on the front, then Ega, then Beers, then uh, 
Baum and uh, the two teams, uh, two riders behind in the blue are Singer Racing's Martin Fry and uh, Simon Stevjan as they uh, head along another uh, lovely section of single track about a uh, just under a kilometer here, just gradually uh, heads upwards. That is the peak of Botmas Corp up ahead there. They don't uh, go right to the top of that, but they go over the shoulder here. And uh, this is again just a beautiful example of the trails here. Stellenbosch Trail Fund do great work here in maintaining these trails. Uh, the uh, legacy of the late uh, Dr. Richard de Villiers, who uh, played such a role in getting the Stellenbosch Trail Fund uh, up and running and now continues. Uh, and uh, a great uh, curatorship of Holden Marshall and others to maintain these trails and make sure that they're in this sort of condition that uh, the world's best riders can come and uh, thrive and uh, enjoy them. Well, we're taking a look at uh, Tristan Norky on the back. Uh, he doesn't have his partner with him. We've spoken about it earlier. He doesn't have his partner with him. He is part of the uh, backup team for uh, Beers and Blevins. If anything should go wrong, Beers and Blevins will be able to rely on Tristan Norky for spares and even for some tactical assistance if required nokia has left his partner behind his partner was ailing overnight had been feeling the effects of an illness but and they are by now at this point nokia will have uh, at least two minutes uh, in front of his partner on the day it's all within the rules of the race he will take a time penalty but uh, it's all sacrificial for the leading team all eyes on the prize on the gc prize and uh, but just the one aspect of the tactics of the race it's all allowed but uh, as we said that time penalty will be coming which will pale into its insignificance if he can get his team the pairing of beers and blevins into yellow and here we see the the women's race and um, we have the the newly the fresh new leaders in the the women's category uh, the efficient infinity ensure here looking like they are still going strong we did speculate and then they also settled a bit yeah we, we now we that we're in the orange jerseys of course we have all eyes uh, set on that we might just you know sit back and and you know approach tomorrow's stage a little bit differently we don't have to go on the attack we have a 25 minutes gap we we don't have to ride as uh, aggressively as uh, we did the past couple of days but look now they're here at the front and it actually looks like they have the uh, the Cannondale Vass uh, RB uh, riders with them, if I am not mistaken. So this is um, this is not what I really not what I expected in the women's uh, race today because orange jerseys they didn't have to go on the attack, but you can see looks like these uh, these jerseys are just giving them uh, wings. And they've just been amazing, Vera Loza and uh, Kim Lacourt this week uh, really have been quite uh, astonishing as they. Uh, head down this wonderful trail that took up trail that isla stows with us isla you watching this from the best seat in the house uh, how's it uh, unfolding um it's been very fun i must say the trails so far have just been top class super grip and buns or it's been quite exciting to see um kim and vera actually just go from the front and things are red split up quite, quite early in the race a little bit of intermittent uh, connectivity with uh, Isla Stowe there. She drops into the trails. Yeah, these trails, as I said, uh, Stellenbosch Trail Fund. Ernst Host, in fact, who does head up uh, the uh, uh, Stellenbosch Trail Fund. He is riding this year's uh, event, so he is riding with his brother. He'll get a chance to uh, uh, ride these trails uh, that uh, he and the Stellenbosch Trail Fund look after so uh, professionally. Look at them flying down uh, G-spot here. Beautiful riding, but still a long way to go from home. Uh, all these riders, yesterday was uh, one of uh, the toughest days I think the uh, Absecape Epic has endured for certainly the back half of the field. Uh, the, the, the route with so much single track up in the mountains at Lawrenceford became at times uh, unrideable. And uh, for long sections, riders were having to push and carry and uh, uh, somehow drag their bikes and bodies through uh, the stage yesterday so really really hard hard day as every day is but yesterday just seemed to be a little bit tougher well i think yesterday as you said it was extremely tough but uh, compounded by the fact that they'd had a previous day mm. of some uh, muddy and wet conditions and two days in a row of that uh, puts a huge pressure on the body on the equipment and we if you follow the uh, feed the cape epic feed on uh, instagram you'll have seen a, a real showing the 
top professionals almost riding up a river section and uh, you're just showing the arduous conditions that riders have been experiencing and uh, right now the, the riders who are having a tough time of it the yellow jerseys have been shipping time they are almost two minutes behind that leading group of Beers and Blevins. Beers and Blevins are second overall at 92 seconds, 1 minute and 32 seconds. So right now, the virtual yellow jerseys have passed on to Beers and Blevins. Yes, uh, as, again, these time uh, uh, gaps are unofficial. and uh, so, But it does look that way because this is the yellow jersey pair with uh, Martin uh, Stolsek and Andreas Servold, Canyon Northwave who uh, were in those yellow jerseys this time last year on this final day, but they were in the hurt box very much like, like this pair as uh, Edgar and Baum rampaged over the mountains to victory in Val de Vie. Yeah, they pretty much have uh, front seat road, uh, front seat rows to uh, front road seats. Sorry, to uh, to a scenario very similar to what they just uh, went through uh, last year. They are leaking time, and about uh, for Nino Schurter, it's about uh, you feel Andre Frischnick. Schurter hasn't shown any frailty this week, but Andre Frischnick has, and that's been uh, the uh, Achilles' heel of uh, Scott Schramm. This is the lead group with uh, Toyota Specialized 91, still split with uh, the two German riders, Gail Geiger and Lukas Baum, in between the two. And it's, it's quite a fascinating, fascinating story, the whole story around um, the Speed Company team. It's a newly formed team with Georg Eggert and Lukas Baum. And uh, Lukas Baum, he was actually the junior uh, cross-country Olympic world champion uh, back in 2013. Mm. And, you know, it's such a young age. And, you know, of course, when you, I think he was uh, one of the first, you know, German Germans to actually become a junior world champion. So, of course, you know, he was kind of the new hope for the for German mountain biking. And, um, yeah, I know for myself, you know, sometimes having to struggle with the pressure like this, especially at such a young age, can be a little bit difficult. And I know that he, he struggled a little bit for some years. And then in 2018, Lucas Baum actually decided to, to pull back from from sport on the highest level saying yeah i'll still do a little bit of racing but I, i'm actually going to focus on finishing my studies and it looks like he really you know took a break just got um you know took out a, got out of the world the, the the which sometimes you know cycling and focusing only on cycling can become such a little bubble and you lose perspective almost a little bit and um, seems like with this pairing uh, in the new, new team with georg Eger, he's really thriving and i think yeah, a big part of it is, you know, that uh, they're no longer dictated by team managers, uh, national uh, coaches and stuff. They actually, you know, they, they're telling the story themselves in the, the way that they want to. You know, and that's sometimes what you need in order to, you know, find a setup where, you, where you're thriving. And, you know, at the end of the day, that's, uh, that all, that's all that matters. Yeah, the bosses, they are in charge of their team. Now we're with the uh, women's uh, race and Canada Vas Arabe here with the uh, CM.com uh, uh, orange jersey wearers, Vera Lossa and uh, Kim Lacourte. And uh, Canada Vas Arabe have had a resurgent week as a diff difficult start. They've lo they lost over an hour and a half in the first uh, four days. But since then, they've ridden themselves right back into contention. They got on the podium on the Queen stage and again yesterday. And it's uh, wonderful to see them in the mix here today, perhaps for a stage win. Who knows? Uh, they might be uh, targeting that as uh, the orange jerseys. They're not a threat to the orange jerseys. Uh, they are on the Bergpart section, the uh, road that uh, runs above the uh, Stellenbosch University playing fields, as you see there. Uh, it's a very, very popular running, riding, and uh, strolling, uh, dog walking uh, section here in, uh, in Stellenbosch. So it's all unfolding in a highly dramatic fashion here on the final day of the uh, 19th edition of the Absa Cape Epic. We'll bring you all this drama, all the excitement, and of course the overall winners when they roll onto the lawns of Val de Vie at Pal. So it is a, a place to be to keep an eye on the Absa Cape Epic.
uh, just seeing uh, Kim Lacourt and uh, Vera Loza just saying, well, we, we've got the orange jerseys. Um, would you like to go and, and do some work as uh, Canada Vas Arabe go to the frontier? Steenberg and uh, Calderon. It's very true, but uh, Kim Lacourt and uh, Vera Loza, I'm pretty sure, you know, they, they would want to win mm. the final stage of this year's race. Yes. They are in the orange uh, jerseys. They, you know, you, you don't find yourselves in the orange jerseys unless you're strong, you know, and capable of being in the, in, you know, in those jerseys. And winning the final stage today will just kind of be, you know, showing that they are strong riders. And they didn't just, you know, get into these jerseys only by accident. They're actually uh, in these jerseys because they're strong riders and they deserve it. So. You can rest assured, you know, they would want a stage win today for sure. They've won four stages. Uh, so they are a team uh, that uh, uh, have shown great form. They wore the red jerseys for much of the uh, week because uh, that is the Absa African women's uh, leaders' jerseys. Uh, they are the uh, bona fide holders of those jerseys right now because they're the leading African team. But, of course, the uh, orange uh, leaders' jersey takes precedence over that. So the red jerseys on the shoulders of Candice Lill and Amy Wakefield. Therein is another story we'll elaborate on uh, today. If you've not been with us this week, that uh, story of Amy Wakefield and Candice Lill is quite uh, remarkable in terms of its uh, drama this week. So this is the upper slopes of the Botmas Corp uh, ascent as they climb on this single track. There is a fire road that goes straight up on the right-hand side, but this uh, trail just carved out of the side of the mountain here. You saw them in the distance there. You can see the Goddess Trail. That was that they were riding in the shadow there. And Simonsburg Mountain with Helsorter Pass over the uh, left-hand side of the picture there. But uh, these riders focused on one thing, and that's... Uh, forging a little bit of a gap or a bigger gap as big a gap as possible over the yellow jerseys and uh, it looks like Blevins and uh, Egg are the two strong men in their respective teams today just a little bit of a, a gap there the top of Botmas Kop high up in these mountains the uh, blue gum forest starting to uh, be big enough to cast this whole trail in shadow it's Tristan Nokia sitting on the back in the red jersey. He is there riding solely in support should Beers and Blevins have any mechanical issues. The race leaders on the grand finale stage from Lawrenceford into Val de Vie as they make their way up the second of the day's big challenges today. This is the... Uh, towards the peak of the Botmas Corp climb. And uh, at the moment, the race leaders are Obia Speed, uh, Obia Leert Speed Company Racing, Georg Egger and Lucas Baum, and uh, Chris Blevins and Matt Beers. That is the race leaders on the stage. But how this impacts the overall standings is irrelevant in that picture there because uh, Nino Schurter and Andre Frischnick in the yellow jerseys are quite some way below this the, the group of riders as they make their way up the single track and uh, they just over the top are the leaders on the right hand side and now a flattish section a little bit of a climb and then a searing descent to come for them Schurter and Frischnecht we cannot give you a definitive gap but when last we had an estimation were just outside of the one minute and 32 uh, lead that they held at the start of today, which puts Beers and Blevins in the virtual yellow jersey. But that might be very, very close. Uh, it, it, this race could come, come down to seconds when they get into Val de Vie today. Yeah, it says it is one of the most fascinating and thrilling last uh, final stages that we I think we had in the history of race almost. It's it's unbelievable. It's, it will come down to seconds and you can see, you know, normally when you kind of enter the Val de Vie and the final stage and the grand finale, that finish line, you can almost, you know, celebrate a little bit down the finish line. Not today. Not I mean, they today. are all <laughs> going to be sprinting flat out for that finish line. We've seen in the past stages exactly that. The riders uh, driving all the way to the finish line. No showboating, no celebrations, just uh, all about business because every second counts, especially in the 2023 edition. It is going to be down to the seconds. 
with uh, around about uh, 25 seconds or so by our estimation uh, separating the yellow jerseys right now virtually on the trails with the, the uh, Scott Sram team of Nino Schota and Andre Frischenecht uh, losing time they are out of the virtual lead and we are going to be seeing some uh, even more fireworks as they head up to the 49 kilometer mark the final obstacle of the day before they descend down the knickknack section the knickknacks single track section and the rolling into the Valdevi estate this is a sky traverse that is cut along the uh, top of the Bunnock Valley. It is a beautiful trail and uh, it looks down over this valley. They've already come out of the Lawrenceford Valley and uh, the Helderberg Basin. They've gone through Stellenbosch up another set of mountains, this uh, Bunnock, uh, uh, Bortmas Kopp climb, and now into the Bunnock Valley. And uh, this trail doesn't look too uh, badly affected by the heavy rains that fell in this part of the world just yet. But uh, yeah, it looks, uh, looks fairly decent. Mm, it looks good condition, yeah. very good. I mean, the first half of this uh, this year's race, we had a lot of dust and loose ground. And now it's with all the rain we had, it's all very, very tacky and uh, good rideable. Um, a lot of the trails will be a lot more fast rolling than what we saw towards uh, the beginning of, the, uh, of uh, the race. But also in the shadows and because with all the overnight rain we had, there will be some slick uh, corners and uh, yeah, riders do not want to be caught out uh, by surprise in one of those corners. So full focus is needed. There, there is, uh, I, I'm guessing that uh, knowing this trail that there is about a minute and 40 seconds between these two teams because this is the yellow jersey on the first of the happens there are two happens on this little section here and uh, that lead group has gone through the second of them above there so there's uh, there's not much between them for sure and uh, Frischnick are fighting hard and this is rather open will they have mm. visual contact with one another not yet now they've just this this uh, group has just disappeared over the uh, little brow of the climb so they'll be just out of sight but they'll know the helicopter they'll they'll they'll, they'll know it's just there and there we go 215 so they aren't closing it just yet but it is a uh, fighting shooter and that man knows so well he's the most uh, successful uh, mountain bike uh, racer of all time 10 time world champion an olympic champion two apps cape epic titles to his name and he is fighting for all his worth to win it for a third time here and uh, he's got to uh, dig so deep in uh, himself and try and get his partner, uh, Andre Frischnick, to, to hang with him. Past the beacon on uh, top of that uh, Sky Traverse trail. And uh, up front, of course, Piers and Blevins will be uh, not uh, aware of what that gap is. All they know, as we saw last year with uh, Egger and Baum, they had no idea what the gap was. They just uh, threw everything at uh, the stage and uh, powered as fast as they could towards the finish. Exactly, and for Matt Beers and Chris Blevins, I mean, there's not much they can do anyway. The only thing they can really control is how they ride, like how fast they go, how dig they deep, and also, you know, managing, you know, just th that fine line bete between going full gas and taking risks and, you know, keeping it, uh, it safe. So it's all about, you know, getting yourself into, you know, that mindset, that, that zone where you don't, think too much you know you just kind of find the flow and 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 ride as fast as as you can not trying to overthink or analyze too much because i mean that's really not much they can do anyway in any way about uh, how scott Schramm will, will ride today they know that they are hit yes and the, you know they shouldn't think too much about getting into yellow or anything they really should just kind of focus on on you know riding as smooth and and fast as they can and it looks like they're doing that just fine they certainly are they uh, have a little bit uh, more to go and then they'll uh, take the descent here but they yep we saw yesterday what can happen and what can impact uh, the race we talked about uh, Blevins' illness early in the week every team is going to go through something uh, and uh, if it's uh, a physical thing as Blevins had an illness uh, Baum had a mechanical and, and for uh, for Schurter and uh, Frischneck, it's about how uh, how the relationship and, and dealing with their partner. So every one of these top three teams has had a different issue to deal with this week. And it's the team that uh, manages to cope with that and uh, overcome those problems best 
that'll uh, come away with the victory here. They're heading towards the Toyota Tough section, the descent here in the Bunnock Valley. The Bunnock Conservancy Trails playing up and uh, giving these riders a chance to express themselves and to bring their very best here. They'll drop down into it now. What a ride. Now it is all about having a little bit of fun here. We did see t in 2022 some of the, uh, there was a little bit of uh, a tactical maneuvering coming down here as Edgar and Baum were trying to go hard down the, the trails last year. And uh, Stosek, uh, I think it might have been, who was just uh, a little bit slower than them and they couldn't find a way past. But the uh, trail here, well, beautifully manicured as it snakes down off uh, the mountainside. We saw last year, just to think, just to cast our minds back, it was de most definitely George Egger and Lucas Baum on the attack on the final day. And they, before they started the day in 2022, they had a deficit to uh, Andreas Seewald, but uh, they managed to turn that around and they gained five minutes and 48 seconds on the German and the uh, Czech rider in 2022. They aren't quite so dominant. They had a terrible day yesterday and uh, who knows what kind of impact it had on Egger and Baum when they had to chase, they had to reduce that uh, gap. It was, uh, the, they had to stop and repair, make a complete, almost a complete drivetrain uh, replacement, they replace the radio railer, replace the chain, and lost 11 minutes at the end of the day. But uh, they would have chased back super hard. We saw the face of Lucas Baum when he crossed the line uh, yesterday, and uh, it was uh, the face of darkness for sure. Really, really suffering he certainly was. Uh, so we're back with him on the uh, the uh, Toyota tough section. But that being said, Speed Company, I feel like they they come much better prepared this year, and maybe also even in a better shape than they were last year. So I think winning, you know, last year's uh, race really, but like very last, you know, on the very final day, not really getting to ride in the yellow jerseys in the race. It really, you know, just made them so eager to come back and yeah, you know, just it put down a statement and say, yeah, we won last year. And it was like on the final day and everything and we didn't ride in the yellow jerseys. And now this year they came prepared and they wanted to be, you know, in the yellow jerseys in the race. And uh, I'm pretty sure that of course, they'll be super di disappointed if they lose the jerseys uh, uh, today. But they will know, you know, that they are actually one step ahead of, of last year. You know, this this mechanical that they had ye uh, late yesterday, it can happen to anyone. And and you oh, Schurter goes down. It looked like a rabbit or a hare on the trail. Well, he had a clear near miss. Uh, on uh, stage three in the, the Akadisberg when a buck was running up the trail and uh, just avoided or went off the trail just at the right time. But this time, uh, wildlife playing a role uh, in uh, a near miss. A little bit of a scare for uh, Scott's Ram MTB. Well, back on the back on the bike, Nino Schurter in a flash. And it uh, looks like the uh, the rabbit or the hare or what it seemed like. It seemed to have survived uh, and uh, certainly was quick to run off as well. Uh, the two meeting very briefly <laughs> and uh, no harm done by the looks of things but they will have lost more time they are uh, on virtual yellow jerseys the virtual yellow jerseys uh, really if, the, if you were to stop the race right now Schurter and uh, Frisch Connect are about a minute back um, having lost over two and a half minutes already on today's stage Beers just gets past Georg Egger, who uh, is today having to look after his partner, Lukas Baum, a bit. He is not uh, quite on the level of Egger today. And Beers joins Blevins up ahead on a little fire road drag. There's another, should be another short section of a single track that will take them past those uh, cottages over there. But, uh, yeah, the, the, the Egger and Baum combination, the win last year wasn't a flash in the pan. They've come back and, uh, well, it's vindicated that decision to form their team, to go on their own and to uh, create this unit they, they have. Their fathers are their support crew. They've got a masseur from here in South Africa helping them out. And that's it. And you saw how quickly they were able to replace their derailleur yesterday. They are their mechanics. They look after their bikes. So uh, they know exactly what they, they're doing there. And they were able to uh, effect those repairs as quickly as possible. They still lost uh, 11 minutes, but uh, really, really efficiently done. This is that little section. It is gets, this can get quite muddy and uh, slushy here, and uh, there may be uh, sections that will be a little bit uh, 
tricky, but uh, these riders, such highly skilled athletes, they will uh, know exactly how to deal with these. Tristan Nokia is the rider just ahead of us here, the Toyota uh, Specialized 91 uh, uh, two team member. His uh, partner, Adrian Boishas, the Frenchman, uh, is uh, either, we, we have news that he, he was not feeling well yesterday, so I'm not entirely sure if he started. He may well have rolled off the start line, allowing Tristan Nokia to then uh, go ahead. Um, Boishas may well have uh, pulled out of the race at this stage, but uh, this gives uh, Nokia a chance to ride with his teammates and some insurance for Beers and Blevins so that they, if they do have uh, a mechanical issue and need uh, parts, uh, they can uh, look at uh, Tristan Nokia's bike. He'll be riding a very, very similar machine. So a little bit uh, further up the trail, uh, the yellow jerseys of Nino Schurter and Andre Frischnick were hammering down the trail, and this is what happened. Uh, Schurter... Well, there's the buck. In fact, it looks like uh, the, the hair running down behind them there. Sure to perhaps had to avoid it and then went a little bit too wide on the burn. Yeah, but nothing seemed to really affect the, them too much. Luckily, I mean, we don't need more <laughs> drama. <laughs> we don't need more <laughs> drama. It's already pretty dramatic. Uh, so, but and luckily nothing happened. And uh, Schurter showing the presence of mind. He, we just judging by the size of that animal, still unconfirmed what type of animal it was, but uh, uh, it looked a little bit larger than we imagined in the beginning. And uh, imagine the damage if Schurter had collided with that um, with that animal. Uh, first of all, the, the the terrible feeling of having injured an animal, but also just uh, injured the bike too. So good call by Schurter to avoid it, even if it did mean uh, just going down. And. Uh, seen all kinds of uh, wildlife at the Absa Cape Epic. You've seen the famous picture of the elephants when the race began in Neisner and uh, that terrible incident with Robert Menon when he collided with a buck. And in fact, just the other day when uh, Nino Schurter yeah. uh, had an, an encounter with a buck, managed to avoid it at that time and uh, very fortunate uh, considering the size of that, uh, of that animal's uh, antlers. Quick section of uh, cement here, an opportunity for Tristan Nokia and other riders to uh, take on some uh, nutrition. They are heading right now on onto the Bunnock Burns uh, section uh, that is uh, has been reshaped and remodeled. They rode it last year and uh, they absolutely uh, love this uh, section, the riders. It's been remodeled and reshaped over the last couple of years by uh, uh, Conrad Stolz, a trail builder of Stolz Trails in this part of the world. And uh, so many of the trail builders here will be on Van and Besson's uh, old Bethlehem farm sh soon. But uh, yeah, so many people making contribution to uh, uh, create the fun and uh, the opportunity to ride these trails. Singer Racing having another good day. I mean, they had some, some, some illnesses, some, some issues to deal with. I know that one of the riders actually caught a stomach bug in the, l in the week leading up to the race and still weren't 100% recovered uh, once the, the race started. But uh, if it weren't for that, I feel like they could have been, you know, in, in the mix uh, on, the, on the overall GC. And really, surely they're riding so strong now here towards uh, the end of the, the race. And surely they have their eyes on a potential stage win today. Yeah, the team, uh, they were formerly dressed in bull's kit and they have stood, they've stood on the second step of the podium at Valdivia in 2021. And that was their best showing ever, Martin Fry and Simon Spidjan. No surprise to the fans, they've been, uh, have 11 Absic Epipex between them. It's just a perspective of where they are now, dropping off uh, the uh, mountain, Botmus Corp Mountain, into the Banuk Valley, uh, the Wasrafi Valley. They'll head up uh, the, uh, basically follow the course of the river, up deep into the valley, cross the bridge uh, in the top there, and then up, head up the climb that uh, is... Uh, characterized by the knickknacks uh, single track ascent lots of tight switchbacks a little bit rocky in uh, places but that'll take them over to the, uh, the old bethlehem farm and interestingly by now they would have done the majority of of the hard climbs mm. already and uh, that is uh, good news for the scotch ram team and uh, not so good news for the specialized team we know that they want the hard the race today the course today to be as hard as possible we know they have gap there possibly virtually in the yellow jerseys right now and now they go into the section of the course where it could like you know suit them less than the the first half of, of uh, the race uh, of the course today so of course question is will they maintain this gap that they have 
Well, they've got uh, an opportunity now on a flat section for a little bit of recovery. They've had the climb and the descent, the technical descent. Now, now's a chance as they head along the valley floor deep into this valley. A little section of tar, then dirt, and it gets progressively rougher and loose uh, as they go into the valley. Well, that gap between Speed Company, the uh, Orbea Lead Speed Company racing, they'll be wanting to look, keep an eye on that gap they, if they want to... Uh, to, if they have any chance at uh, winning today and uh, any chance at that yellow jersey. It looks like it's a dominant pairing of Beers and Blevins, but uh, the Orbea Elliott Speed Company, Lucas Baum, seemed to be struggling on the earlier slopes today. And George Egan nursing his partner and uh, just keeping that gap down to a minimum. Who knows what, uh, if there is our cracks that are starting to show, but Singer Racing are in very close attendance. The Singer Racing team... Uh, the pairing of Martin Fry, Simon Sp Steve John, and uh, they uh, broke away from the Bulls outfit uh, recently to form the nucleus of Singer Racing. Several pro and amateur riders in Germany, and they are pure stage racing specialists. We do expect to see fireworks from them towards the end of the day for a prestigious stage win in the Champs-Élysées of mountain biking in Val de Ville, the grand finale. And uh, they uh, have had a good showing recently. They were they won the 2022 Four Islands MTB in Croatia, the iconic uh, race, part of the epic series in Croatia. And uh, they were second that year, 2022, last year, in fact, at Spa Swiss Epic. So they have, there's no doubting their credentials as stage race specialists, but uh, they all enjoy a free ride to the finish, uh, courtesy of Christopher Blevins. Not enjoying a free ride whatsoever. They seem to have... Uh, they seem to have lost the uh, pair that were behind them, the Canyon North Wave team. And Ina Schutter just showing the signs on his shoulder of that crash on that berm as he swerved to avoid that, uh, that wild animal. This, uh, although they might be in the virtual yellow now, Beers and Blevins, this race is by far and away not over. Schurter and, uh, and Frischnacht were just reaching the uh, gate to turn right onto this section of road. There they are now on that uh, tar, and they will be absolutely hammering it along here to try and close the gap. They may well have got a split at the bottom there as they came down that uh, section and have an idea of, of how far behind they are and know what they have to do. It's coming down to seconds in this uh, grand finale of the Absa Cape Epic as uh, Schurter and Frischnacht of Scott Tram MTB try and defend their uh, yellow jerseys. 92 seconds is all that stood between them in first place and Toyota specialized uh, 91. The gap but we estimating is uh, we've been uh, past an estimate is around two minutes and four seconds. If uh, that is uh, correct, we, they may have closed it a little bit, uh, Schurter and Freshnecht, but uh, it is uh, swings and roundabouts, uh, toing and froing. There we go. Well, it's nail biting stuff because that's only a 32 second difference in the virtual leader's jersey. And uh, we just see uh, Lucas, uh, we saw George Ega going to the front now. They seem to be cooperating well with the specialized team. Uh, the Blevins and Beers pairing is, uh, they've, they've really got all to gain from this. We should be seeing the Beers and Blevins team at the front all the time. But uh, they are getting some assistance from the Orbea Leard Speed Company team. And uh, with 30 seconds hanging in the balance, it's going to come down right to the line at the Val de Ville finish. It has never been this close and this exciting before. It's, uh, it, uh, yeah, it is uh, the most crazy drama I've ever seen in this race. <laughs> and, and there's two races, in fact, going on here because the Singer Racing Team, they'll be looking for a stage when they are not a threat whatsoever on general classification. At the back, Chris Tristan Nokia, really, he's an insurance policy for the, uh, for the pairing of Beers and Blevins, just in case anything were to go wrong. Uh, all the cards are being held by the specialized team right now. But uh, absolutely on the back foot, uh, and Andre Frischner pacing at the front. The riders in the leaders' jerseys, they are leading the race overall. But uh, today, they are not leading the stage. They are well over two minutes back. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna put them in a few boxes quickly, uh, because this is a this is a pair of riders who uh, predominantly race cross country uh, Olympic all year round. This is uh, uh, perhaps their only. Um, that motorbike bike stage race they'll do uh, as a combination through the year. All the other riders up ahead are pure marathon specialists and stage race specialists. So uh, it's, a, it's an interesting uh, 
uh, juxtaposition of these uh, different disciplines that these riders uh, ride. But what we know is that uh, in that cross-country uh, combination behind is the most successful uh, cross-country racer of all time in terms of uh, Nino Schurte, who has won two of these titles. So it's not as if he's, uh, he's in unfamiliar territory here. For Egger and Baum, well, five and a half minutes they had to make up uh, over uh, the yellow jerseys. But of course, uh, they've got to, to try and get away from this pair. Uh, Chris Blevins and Matt Beers, it's not likely to happen as we look up into this uh, foreboding uh, Bunhock Valley. In fact, it is there, but they're heading along a trail that'll take them to a bridge over the river, across the river. And not far from there, there's a, uh, a little uh, gauge where the, uh, the freshwater pipe that comes from the uh, Tiavata's Clough Dam and takes water all the way through to Cape Town comes through the uh, tunnel here, th through the mountains. They borrowed uh, that. A tunnel. Here's the gap. So difficult to, to uh, give you a time. But um, as we heard, t two minutes there and thereabouts, which puts uh, uh, Schurter and uh, Frischnick in second place on the road on the general classification right now. Imagine the world of pain that uh, both the Scott Tram riders are in right now. They have no idea of uh, the just what's, uh, what's going on up front. All they can only imagine, all they can do is put their, uh, pin their ears back and uh, put maximum effort down. It's really all they have to do is they have to get to Valdivia Estate without shipping any more time and gaining back 30 seconds. Not an easy task, especially with uh, the urgency we see at this pace right in the group right now with Beers Blevins and Lucas Baum and George Egger driving the pace. Nasty little shorts uh, climb there, just in Norkia, just uh, trying to find a line and eventually uh, getting. He, he was right climbing at his own pace there. He wasn't going to get involved in the racing there, but he just felt he'd, to keep the momentum, he, he had to take the line on the left hand side. But it is, uh, they, as I said earlier, they're heading into uh, quite a, a, a rough section as they drop off this little plateau. Uh, there's likely to be a lot of standing water. And uh, some very, that usually is some, some soft sand. That'll be firmer, but they're likely to go through some, uh, some rocky uh, sections with uh, some standing water as it comes off the mountains. Martin Fry, by the way, came fourth in the World Marathon Championships last year behind uh, Sam Gaze, Andreas Sivolt, and Simon, uh, Simon Andreasen. So the man has got some good form towards the end of last year. And uh, his uh, partner, uh, obviously, Simon Steepjohn, has vast experience at this event. Uh, so they are a, a team that are, yeah, they've underperformed. Fry was sick earlier in the week and uh, they gained plenty of, I think it gained 12 places when they got into the break uh, on uh, the Queen stage. So they moved up to about 27th, but uh, that's not a true reflection of, of their, their talents and skills here. No, I have a feeling that a lot of the teams that we witnessed this year, they will, uh, you know, they will be want to come back for more, you know, because they know that they can uh, do so much better. And uh, you can rest assured we haven't seen the last uh, of uh, single racing uh, just yet or speed company racing for that uh, for that matter. I mean, they may not doesn't look like they will win this year's uh, race, but they they have performed. I would say like performance wise wise. They have been stronger than uh, than last year, and you can rest assured they'll come back next year to just really, you know, show what they're capable of. Well, it's uh, all uh, coming down to uh, the uh, last 20, 30 k's of this uh, final stage of the grand finale here at the uh, 2023 Absa Cape Epic. Will the yellow jersey still be on the shoulders of Shirt and Frischneck? We'll find out soon. Schurter and Frischnick, the Scottsdale MTB pair in the yellow jerseys up that short, sharp uh, technical climb. And uh, they are trailing the uh, leaders uh, by about two minutes, we reckon, at this stage, which would be enough to knock them off uh, the top step uh, of the podium come the end of the race if it were to stay this way now. There is still trail. There's still a lot of uh, uh, technical trail to get through to uh, get to Val de Vista. So they're uh, going to have... Uh, an opportunity perhaps will there be one more opportunity for this pair to uh, uh, get uh, back on level terms with Beers and Blevins who've flown the coop up ahead with Georg Eger and Lucas Baum and the Singer racing pair. 
And the Singer Racing pair looking to gain a prestigious stage when they're not interfering in the front. Uh, they've said already they don't want to. They didn't want to interfere with the racing, the general classification race when they were on the podium on stage five, the Queen stage, leaving the fight up to the uh, up to the front runners in the overall. But uh, we're looking now at Team Scott Sram, Nino Schurter, and Andre Frischenecht. Schurter, of course, is often referred to as the greatest of all time. Showed promise from a very young age, from a junior. In fact, he raced uh, downhill and cross country on the, the Swiss national team as a junior. And uh, he, uh, when he was the elite world champion, in fact, in 2009, his father was the Masters downhill champion too. So uh, certainly runs in the family. Nina Schurter, Andre Frischnick also runs in the family. Andre Frischnick is the son of mountain bike legend Thomas Frischknecht and the grandson of Peter Frischknecht, also a professional cyclist specializing in, uh, in the, the cyclocross discipline. And today, Andrew Frischknecht tailing uh, Nino Schurter, trying to limit the damage today. We saw the last time gap, two minutes and five seconds, or they seem to be, it's the ebb and flow of that gap. We have yet to see exactly those official time checks but by our estimation and from our people on the ground, they are telling us that the race is going to come down two seconds. They uh, are holding on and hanging on and fighting for every one of those seconds here. Can you believe that uh, a week ago at the prologue, it was all square and here we are, uh, 540 k's later, and it's coming down to seconds between these teams. It's quite astonishing. Schurter and uh, Frischneck getting towards the end of this uh, valley section. Well, this is the Scottsram MTB pair of Nino Schurter and Andre Frischneck in the race leaders' yellow jerseys, which they uh, reclaimed yesterday after holding it uh, for four days. They are holding and fighting for all they're worth to hang on to those jerseys because up the road, around about two minutes up the road, are Matt Beers and Chris Blevins of a Toyota Specialized 91 who have uh, put uh, at least two minutes into them, which is uh, about 28 seconds more than they needed. So it puts them in the virtual leader's jersey at this stage of the race. But the race is not over yet. They've got a little section of knickknacks to climb, and this is where they will all uh, be aiming for Val de Vie in Pal. And uh, only once they cross the line here will we know who's going to be the uh, overall champion in 2023. Well, we'll know that, and uh, we will certainly see the where there will be a fight to the line. There will be high tempo set by Beers and Blevins, Egger and Baum, and it will be uh, see what uh, the Singer Racing team get up to. Well, Val de Vie playing host to the uh, grand finale once again. It is a wonderful place uh, to come and ride bikes and to visit as well.
Aldavi in this uh, beautiful part of the world is uh, truly spectacular. Lots of people gathering here at uh, the uh, polo fields at Aldavi to welcome in the uh, riders at the Absa Cape Epic. Uh, the fast, the middle of the field, and uh, those who've uh, toiled for uh, anything between seven and nine hours a day every day to get to the finish. They're on the knickknacks trail now. This is our leading group of three teams plus one. Beers and Blevins, uh, Toyota Specialized 91, Liet or Beer, or Beer Liet uh, Speed Company, Gail Gregor and Lucas Baum, and Singer Racing, Martin Fry and Simon Steve John. The first two of those teams are dicing it out for positions on the overall standings with Beers and Blevins currently in the virtual leader's yellow jersey. They're not wearing it because that's on the shoulders of Schert and Fishnick down the back of the trail by about two minutes. Quite a fascinating uh, journey and fascinating race. Um, we did see uh, Toyota 91 specialized in the, the yellow jersey uh, earlier this week. They lost it because due to a uh, the worst day of uh, his racing career almost from uh, Chris Blevins when he went through what we believe were stomach cramps and just not feeling it, losing eight minutes on stage one, day two of this race. And ever since, they have just been going stronger and stronger and stronger. And it, how it st so how it stands right now, it looks like they're going to ride themselves into to yellow, but it's so, so close and it's changing all the times. And it will come down to seconds in the end. Yep, that uh, may well be what it uh, will be all about. Last year, Egan Baum uh, were two minutes and 45 seconds behind the yellow jerseys and uh, made, it, uh, made that up plus more to storm to victory here in the most... Uh, phenomenal fashion and uh, they didn't uh, they only got the yellow jerseys at the end of that they haven't they didn't get to wear the yellow jerseys during the race last year and they finally earned that to right when they won the queen stage going into lawrence but they wore the yellow jerseys for one day here and that was yesterday when they had a major mechanical and lucas baum's uh, bike his uh, red derailleur basically exploded uh, thanks to a piece of wire and they had to replace that and lost 11 minutes and with it the yellow jerseys so uh, that's the drama that can unfold in this Absa Cape Epic. And we haven't even got to the drama that's unfolded in the women's race. We will get to that because there's so much to tell there from the last week and indeed yesterday. And still very much in touch, the, uh, the group of three teams out front, Beers and Blevins, Toyota Specialized 91, charging for the aiming, not just for the stage win, but uh, their main goal will be the overall general classification, knowing that Scott Sram have been distanced, knowing that gap is, uh, is, uh, is growing, uh, which is with the pace they've been setting. And Orbi Elliott Speed Company, that's uh, Egger and Baum, and Steve John and Fry, Singer Racing, taking a ride at the back, looking for that prestigious win in Val de Vie. And we saw at the back an interesting, uh, interesting sight, the uh, tactical maneuver by the specialized uh, factory racing team, Tristan Nokia on the back. We've noticed one thing in particular, he would be well positioned to, uh, to provide some tactical support, some work on the front, to pace on the front, to help uh, Levins and Beers keep the pace high, but they've elected not to. Nokia has elected to stay at the back with one focus, and that's as an insurance policy for uh, any mechanicals that might, uh, might occur. They've left the firepower up to Blevins and Beers and with that insurance policy, Nokia has left it. Uh, Nokia, that's Nokia's one job, is to stay in touch with this group just in case Beers and Blevins have any mechanical issues. I actually believe that uh, if his partner, uh, Tristan Nokia, his, his partner had to pull, pull out today, which we still need to have confirmed, I'm pretty sure that he's actually not allowed to, to interfere with the racing, to, to actually you know, provide a draft to, to other riders. I'm not 100% sure, but I th I'm pretty sure that's the case. But no matter what, I'm pretty sure that he's also, you know, just from a racing point of view, he, he don't want to be involved with the racing. He don't want to play a factor only as a backup team, uh, backup, backup rider in, uh, in case of a mechanical. But I don't think he, he's going to interfere or go in between uh, the riders here. He's got just going to let it come down to, to them battling things out. And his only job is yeah, to, to help out with a mechanical in case uh, Chris Blevins or Matt uh, Beers would, would have, for example, a, a flat tire. 
I don't care if you're racing for the overall uh, standings on the Absa Cape Epic or you're racing for position 563rd. The, you've got to be having fun on these trails. Absolutely beautiful riding. And they are in pristine condition with uh, that tackiness uh, provided by the overnight rain. It really is uh, an absolute joy for these riders to fly down here. Beautifully maintained uh, trails. Uh, originally built again by Conrad Stolz, but maintained and uh, added to and uh, creatively done by uh, Vaynant Besson and his team. What a ride, what a journey for these riders on Old Bethlehem Farm. This could be a very exciting uh, final if these teams are all going to uh, arrive at the finish line at the same time. We know that if it comes to, you know, tactical finish, uh, Matt Beers and Christopher Blevins, they are above the wrist. They have uh, pulled off some, some amazing finishes here uh, at this year's race. Just really, you know, showing how, how smart riders they are when it comes to a tactical uh, finish. But the question is, I, you know, the, the, I don't think the, the stage win for them today is that important yes of course it's a benefit but if you know they don't want the pace to drop at any point they if they sense okay now it becomes tactical the pace is dropping they will go straight to the front and and keep the pace high because they have to gain every single second they they can on scott Ram. so i don't think necessarily today that they're gonna you know go for a tactical uh, sprint finish they're just gonna be riding so hard as hard as they can uh, at the front that's uh, it, yeah, they, 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 their priority today is yellow. And uh, if they finish, happen to finish third today, but in this group, uh, that'll be enough as long as they're two uh, a minute and uh, 33 seconds ahead of uh, Schurter and uh, Frischnick. They've just flown down a section of the uh, Cobra Trail that uh, is uh, fast and fun and a little flat drag now, and then they begin uh, a uh, climb up uh, on the other side. So, yeah, they're, they're priority, and they've just got a little bit of a gap here, but I think it's just uh, because of that uh, descent there. But uh, there's Gail Geger, and uh, Lucas Baum is the man in this Obea Lit Speed Company uh, combination that has uh, taken a bit of heat today. He uh, dug so deep yesterday. They emptied the tanks. They had a puncture on the Queen stage. They chased back uh, after issues there in fact no that wasn't on the queen stage that was on stage five and uh, they really had to dig dig deep uh, to th this year they didn't have too many major issues last year Edgar and Baum uh, they had one puncture and uh, went of course briefly on uh, on stage five but uh, this year they've had uh, a huge amount of problems and still they're right in the mix five minutes and 32 down they started the day well, we're hearing differing reports uh, from the time checks. Uh, we've heard that uh, Nina Schurter and Audrey Frickner have clawed back a few seconds at the, uh, the last time. The last time check we saw, not still unofficial, but uh, very much all just a few seconds to play for in the overall general classification. Still up the road, Toyota, speci Toyota Specialized 91 absolutely charging at the front with uh, Lucas Baum, George Egger, for Orbia Liet Speed Company. Singer Racing taking a back seat, enjoying the ride, but uh, Scott Sram chasing as hard as they can. Around about the two minute mark back, around about two minutes uh, in deficit, they have a 92 second uh, advantage on overall general classification. Just to recap on the general classification, the uh, Lucas Baum and uh, George Egger are five minutes and 32 seconds back off Scott MTV Racing. So it doesn't look likely at this stage in the race. We're still reaching the end. We're nearly nearing the last half of the race. Uh, it looks unlikely that uh, Egger and Baum will be able to distance Toyota Specialists by the three minutes they require over them on general classification. So it really is coming down. It's shaping up to be a, a dice between Toyota Specialized 91 and Scott SRAM. Oh, here we go. Nino Schurt is putting on his show whilst uh, also trying to claw back uh, those seconds. And 
that's where it'll end. Uh, that little cobra section, uh, watching Nino shirt uh, there, absolutely beautiful. He uh, doesn't uh, miss an opportunity to uh, to show us his sublime skills and the uh, joy for riding a bike. Clearly, uh, just loves riding his bike. And uh, Henry Fishnick just sitting on his back wheel here. Uh, he's, he seems to. Uh, be recovering. I mean, he suffered at the first climb yesterday, he suffered again uh, today. But uh, as we go deeper into the stage, he looks as though uh, he's uh, looking a bit stronger. Well, all credit to Andrew Frischen. If he's holding it uh, brilliantly, lesser riders would have absolutely cracked under this kind of pressure. And uh, he definitely seemed to be uh, up a level since he, uh, when he arrived this year, and knowing that he had a big task ahead of riding with uh, none other than Nino Schurter. He knew what he was getting himself into and his training over the winter. We heard from uh, his team manager and his father that uh, he was, uh, he's was he gone up an absolute uh, huge improvement in uh, his overall level of with some great early season results, making sure he was up to the task of riding with the GOAT, as he's referred to, Nino Schurter. Well, uh and his father Thomas is riding in uh, the Grand Masters category. They're currently in third place. Uh, Ian Urskirig, his uh, regular partner, so he's in in the race here. Well, uh, Tristan Nokia is sitting at the tail of this group that is doing everything in its power to put time into that yellow jersey pair. Well, that's where they uh, are high up above on the uh, lower slopes of Dragoon Peak and. Uh, Above uh, Old Bethlehem, Bethlehem Farm, Kyle Morp, Neil, Johannes Dahl, and uh, the uh, wonderful little villages that dot uh, through this valley. Well, this is happening just above them there, but there'll be plenty of attention. Uh, there'll be plenty of uh, spectators as they get uh, closer to the Bird River, which they will cross uh, at the end of this uh, trail at around about uh, 65 kilometers. Now to our cm.com women's race and it looks like the uh, race leaders in the orange jerseys are determined to make uh, this a ride to glory mm, yeah for sure we know that they wrote themselves into orange uh, just yesterday and they they just couldn't believe the fact that they were to ride uh, in the orange jerseys they've been going so strong to us uh, the end of uh, this week just uh, winning stages and you looking more and more in control of the race but of course they still had a, a, a quite a decent gap to close up until the orange jerseys i think it was around 13 minutes and then also yesterday they, they did get away fr uh, at the front and they did pull a, a gap on the, all the other teams and um, what then happened was that of course amy wakefield uh, had this huge huge mechanical on her rear wheel uh, a crack cracked uh, rim uh, cost them all sorts of troubles and she had to ride for quite uh, a long time on a on a flat wi uh, on a flat tire uh, a cracked rim and the uh, amy wakefield and candace lil lost the the orange jerseys yesterday and uh, they actually lost uh, 38 uh, minutes uh, which now means that uh, kim lecourt and vera loisa are in the orange jerseys with a around 25 minute gaps uh, on amy wakefield and candace lil so they could ride more conservatively today, but they're still out there going strong at the front, and you can be sure that they want to, you know, finish this race on a high and a potential stage win. No reason why not uh, for Kim and Vera make every stage count, and they've had a, an excellent uh, race all the way through. Now we turn our attention back to the men on a really rocky, rough uh, trail section. This heading. Uh, across the valley not a, it's it, it trends uphill this it's not a major climb by any stretch of the imagination that it's the terrain and surface that'll that, that'll test the riders here beers now doing on the front he hasn't uh, it, it's been blevins who's done most of the uh, the front riding at the uh, during this stage now beers on the front egger and baum on their wheels and they'll just hang on to the coattails there's uh, lucas baum showing great determination and uh, grit after suffering clearly yesterday and then uh, in the early stages of today. Steve Jun and uh, Martin Fry are the uh, singer racing pair who are well spectators in the fight for the general classification but uh, eyeing out the potential of a stage win here. 
which they may well get because the fight is uh, there, there are two races in one here with the stage and of course then the uh, general classification which is the uh, other two teams in that league group and we did see a uh, singer racing uh, riding tactically uh, on one of the other stages where they managed to put uh, they also like today it was a similar scenario just sitting in with the group waiting 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 uh, till the finish line and then managing to open up a you know i think it was a 30 or 45 minute uh, gap on the the riders on the, on the teams that they rode with the entire stage so they they know to how to manage uh, efforts and to really go for a, a strong uh, finish line sprint could be a similar scenario today and uh, well if i were to put my money on a team here definitely uh, singer singer racing would be the team that i would yeah think would take the stage win today they've certainly been targeting it it's it's clear that they've been doing that so they're going to be biding their time and perhaps a uh, last a few kilometers there perhaps uh, likely they could be launching an attack and just uh, it's still the main race there are two races going on at the front with race for the stage win but the race for the overall leaders' jerseys, the Chiavita leaders' jerseys, those beautiful yellow tunics that we've seen the Scott Stram team wearing uh, throughout the week. It was inherited from the, uh, the Toyota 91 Specialized team. But uh, it seems to be changing hands again. It's changed hands back to the Scott Stram team after the, for one day, it was only a day that Egger and Baum wore it. It was a calamitous day for them losing over 11 minutes and uh, it was in fact the first time that the Germans have ever worn the jersey in a stage they wore the jersey only on the podium in 2022 they won the overall race only wore it on the podium never in the race yesterday was their day but uh, it ended it started off really well in yellow they had their color-coded socks they had their color-coded uh, bib shorts but uh, at the end of the day, they had to relinquish those yellow jerseys back to the Scott SRAM team. Well, Singer Racing on general classification are 26th at the moment, uh, and they are th over three hours down on uh, the leading teams. So they are capitalizing on an opportunity here and on good legs and good form at the end of the week to see if they can... Uh, uh, take the stage win. Look at beautiful Siemensburg Mountain. We saw it from uh, the southern... Uh, Slopes now on uh, the northern side in the sunshine. Beautiful uh, presiding over this uh, valley, the Bonnock Valley. And as they head down towards the Berg River, a little nod there from uh, Tristan Norkir, just indicating to our e-biker Stefan Sam, we're going right down here on these trails as they're flying down towards uh, the uh, crossing of the Berg River. So it's basically now flat out to the finish and uh, that sprint finish we, we know that Edgar and Baum got a little bit peeved at the tactics of uh, Blevins and Beers early in the week uh, when they uh, pulled a strategic smart strategic move to take a, a stage win for the second time of the week with this little sprint finish but uh, that's the nature of uh, mountain bike stage racing so the finish is in about the next hour More wonderful trails as our leading group uh, surge towards the finish of the grand finale here in uh, the 2023 Apsa Cape Epic. High pace racing at the moment as they try and put time into the yellow jerseys. That's what it's all about today. Well, just to keep an eye on those trail surfaces, uh, probably more favorable trail surfaces that we've seen in the over the, over the week. But uh, there are still just a few sandy sections and rocky sections, firmer because of the rain or after the rains, and uh, but just a couple of little outcrops of rock and uh, saw earlier just a bit of a swerve from the Singer Racing team just to get around the rocky section. They know very well that uh, just one small single rock could uh, end their chances at the stage and especially for the overall GC classification riders uh, aiming for that, uh, that yellow jersey in Val de Vie. The uh, hands, the, the cards are definitely in favor of the uh, the pairing of Beers and Blevins because they have the insurance policy of Tristan Norkir riding at the back. Just a, you could say a parts donor just in case things do go wrong. George Egger, Lucas Baum, 
don't have that luxury, but they will be, uh, it won't hold them back from attacking these trails. Full gas, you can see there from the uh, Bulls uh, e Media e-bike logo that we are using to track where the riders are at the moment on the map. You can see in front, we're in the very center. They are hitting the 60 kilometer mark very soon with 80 kilometers as the, as the uh, stage length today. 80 kilometers and uh, 2,400 meters of climbing. It's a big day of climbing. The main obstacles they have overcome, the obstacle of Hunderport, uh, Botmanskop, and the climb up to Nicknacks. They have uh, breached those obstacles, and now it's just a rolling run into the finish from the 60 kilometer mark. Yeah, indeed, fascinating racing. It's uh, it's all unfolding now, and uh, remember that uh, Chris Blevins and uh, Matt Beers, they only, so to speak, only had to pull 92 seconds on Scratch Ram to today to take the overall uh, yellow jerseys and the GC lead. Oh, and now we can actually see that it looks like Speed Company is going a little bit on the attack now. For sure, they are increasing the pace at the front, eager to keep this one going, and uh, taking a good pull at the front here, but uh, there's a little bit of a gap opening up between Georg Egger and Lukas Baum, so it's not very efficient uh, racing here, and one could speculate what, what tactics are at uh, this moment. We're into the last uh, 19 or so kilometers of this final stage of the 2023 Epsa Cape Epic with Gary Gega and Lucas Baum, the defending champions, but third going into this final stage by five and a half minutes. And they are at the front here, putting in a surge now on a flat road section. Uh, heading towards the Berg River, Lucas Baum and Gael Geiger. And uh, the men they are in this group with and trying to leave behind are those two, Beers and Blevins, who at this stage are in the virtual yellow jerseys. They started the day 92 seconds behind their overall, overall leaders, Nino Schurter and Henri Frischnick. And this has been a searing attack by Eger and Baum as they power away from... Uh, they try and power away from... Uh, of Beers and Blevins, but they're not going to drop them that easy. Singer Racing are hanging in for as much as they can, yeah. Yeah, but look at the elastics it is stretching right now. They are riding, all of them are riding on the limit, just absolutely full gas. They want to be right on the wheel in front of the right, uh, at the, on the, of the wheel, uh, of the rider in front of them. And you can see these gaps are starting to open up. And it's actually Matt Beers that are leaving a little bit of a, a gap to the speed company racing. And uh, I have a feeling that they are really just trying to ride everybody off their wheels right now, the speed company racing here. Well, it's a big ask for them if they want to gain three minutes over their rivals. Uh, Neger and Baum have a three minute deficit to the, uh, li the, the pairing of Beers and Blevins. And they, uh, it's a, a tall order to do this on the flat sections. They uh, didn't show their huge dominance that they've shown over the past few days on the climbs. But Matt Beers having to dig deep to uh, keep that gap down to minimum. He looks back to Christopher Levins. He will look to Blevins to, uh, to get that gap under control, just to give a lender hand. And Singer Racing have a big call to make right now. They need to make a call as to what to do about this because they have already said they don't like to interfere with the overall general classification. They may also be under pressure, but if they want to have a chance at a stage when they need to get on terms with the pairing of Eggers and Egger and Baum. If they can. <laughs> <laughs> this is searing uh, pace as they pass through the last of the water points, cross the railway track, and they'll head down and uh, go underneath the road and into the trails on the far side. Four minutes is what they need to uh, make up, uh, do uh, uh, Egger and Baum on uh, Specialized, but it's not likely to happen. And, but look at the pace that they're going mm. right now. You know, that, that gap is like, oh, it's, it's not closing to Specialized. And do, we just saw before that Matt, he was like riding with a gel in his mouth and he was looking for more stuff in his pockets. I, f I have a feeling that Toyota Specialized 91, they're starting to hurt a little bit now. And Speed Company, they're just taking full advantage of that. Well, with under 20 Ks to go. And uh, perhaps in the back of their minds, Lucas Baum and George Egger might not be looking to gain... Uh, any real advantage on overall, they may have uh, realized that that, uh, that is no longer uh, uh, possible. But uh, 
If they want to save their week and save the day, they will want to take that stage win. And this could be the move they're making right now. And distanced from the back, Tristan Nokia, he will stay. He'll keep uh, the power down, keep the pressure on as much as he can to try and stay as close as he can to uh, Beers and Blevins to still remain that, uh, that insurance policy for the pairing. But it looks like that, uh, that huge surge has been neutralized. Lucas uh, Baum and George Egger, it's all together again. And uh, for the neutralization of that, the pace will go down. And these kind of maneuvers, this kind of tactics will play into the hands of Scott Sram because if the pace lulls, it means that Scott Sram can take, just make back time. Scott Sram will be putting a very consistent effort he, when there is a bit of a start-stop uh, nature of the pace. That means that uh, the average speed, the average pace will come down slightly. So Matt Beers and Chris Blevins will be unlikely to uh, be cooperating with uh, speed uh, with the Orbi Elite Speed Company now. They will leave it up to the Germans Germans knowing that that uh, attack that surge has been neutralized their impetus will also be reduced they're going to look back they're going to take a bit of a chance to feed and all playing into the hands of Scott Sram so they need to make a call right now do they cooperate do they keep the uh, the pace high or do they uh, do they continue playing the games they're playing a dangerous game to be playing with the overall GC deficit of 92 seconds they fly past the Kruid Rockenstein uh, country club and uh, they will turn left very very shortly uh, you, you've got a sense that uh, Egger and Baum used that uh, dirt road flat section where perhaps the riders were taking an opportunity to uh, take a drink and feed they thought this is our chance let's go and uh, they went uh, hard but not hard enough to uh, break the elastic back to uh, Blears and Blevins Alongside the road, this trail that uh, runs all the way to Franschhoek from Pahl and uh, likewise to Stellenbosch off the road, allowing mountain bikers and uh, walkers to be able to uh, ride and uh, walk safely off the road. So in they go to Ludus Magnus, I think this is, and a uh, little tar road section here. Now across the uh, Berg River floodplain and uh, now come out uh, pretty near the Hruit Druckenstein or the Druckenstein Correctional Facility on the far side. So all together again after that uh, brief but uh, fearsome assault by the uh, German pair. Well that was impressive. It took a while for Beers and Blevins to get back on terms with that surge from Baum and Egger and uh, clearly showing the form that they've been showing over the last week being on the attack today not quite as sprightly as they were but uh, the, the Beers and Blevins pairing know full well that uh, their assault on the overall general classification does in fact rely on them staying in touch with Eger and Baum even if they don't cooperate fully they will need to make sure that the pace stays consistent stays high any games they're playing does uh, put that uh, that overall GC under threat. A low level bridge across the uh, Berg River Dam, a bit higher than normal because of the rains, but it is controlled by the big Berg River Dam uh, up the valley. This is the Berg River, of course, and uh, they're over that safely. And soon they'll be reaching the 10k to go mark. They've passed the 15 kilometer to go a marker point, and they, uh, there are no major climbs whatsoever. In fact, it looks rather flat at the moment, the run in towards Valdevi. The uh, scene of the grand finale and the uh, scene of many years, the race has been coming to Valdevi, has been hosted by Valdevi since 2017, the grand finale. The first grand finale having been won by Frischknecht himself, riding with van der Heiden and uh, Sabine Spitz, Robin de Groot winning the women's category uh, race. Stage 7 also hosted in the by Valdevi in 2018, 2019, 2021 and 2022 with some illustrious uh, riders having won at the Valdevi estate. The final, the last uh, edition we had 2022 Speed Company Racing in fact won here and they will hope to repeat that victory and uh, Candice Lil, Mariska Strauss also having won the uh, grand finale in uh, 2022.
Well, the riders entering Ludus Magnus, they're greeted by youngsters from the Franschuk uh, Football Club uh, who are out here. This is a wonderful venue where they can do uh, uh, any number of sports uh, in training camps and uh, preparation camps. So these riders are firing it up as they power through here. And uh, well, Gayo Gega, he's done nothing in this race pretty much throughout the week other than just go full gas. Uh, his partner has, as a result, uh, suffered a little, but Baum looks as though he's hanging in here. There's no holding back here. They are going flat out. We'll bring you a time split uh, as soon as we can in terms of where Schurter and uh, his partner Frischnick are in the yellow jerseys and whether that is uh, under threat. We know it has been under threat, and in fact, uh, virtual leaders Beers and Blevins for a while uh, on the uh, trail, but uh, no solid confirmation just yet as to whether that uh, is currently the case that they are the leaders. But they are certainly making every effort to put that uh, 92 seconds into uh, Schurter and Frischnick. And Egger and Baum, well, they were four minutes behind Beers and Blevins at the start of the day, and five minutes and 32 seconds behind the uh, overall lead oh that's what happens when you take your eye off uh, the uh, the road in front uh, lucas baum very nearly uh, a costly mistake there very very careful so they uh, leave the Ludus magnus if uh, clearly using the uh, mother nature as a solar energy and they'll Heading towards the Drakenstein Correctional Facility. That's uh, out of Ludus, Ludus Magnus and Drakenstein Correctional Facility. They'll ride very close, if not uh, par through part of the uh, Correctional Facility. All very flat here on the Berg River floodplain uh, at the moment. So no more climbs. It's all about a uh, sprint to the finish, we th think. Well, it's hard to predict exactly what's going to happen because fresh legs on the back. <laughs> so Martin Fry and, uh, and Simon Stibjan, they have not done a stitch of work. And uh, we do expect them to launch an attack towards the end. It'll serve them well to not have to sprint it out with the likes of Beers and Blevins. Blevins, an incredibly intelligent racer, knows all the tactics that are needed to win a stage. But uh, for them, they can really be... Can Singer Racing can rely on the fact that... Uh, Beers and Blevins have got the overall prize in front of them. That'll be their priority of the day. And George Egger, who's on the front right now, pushing the pace as hard as he can, will soon start to expect some help from Christopher Blevins. George Egger and uh, Lucas Baum have a three-minute deficit to the uh, pairing of Beers and Blevins. It's, uh, it's unlikely they're going to close that. They've tried. We saw it exceptional surge from them that took a long time for Beers and Blevins to get back on terms with it. But uh, we're going to uh, take a look back at the women's category, the CM.com women's category and still status remains. The Cannondale Vass Arabe team having a great day out. These are stage race specialists and hanging on or staying with them and cooperating with them are the leader jerseys wearers Kim Lacourt and Vera Lawser. Yeah, having a fantastic latter half of the race, as are Cannondale Vass Arabe, the uh, stage race specialist. They did predict that they would come better, come good towards the latter half of the race. Gerda Steenberg, in fact, has said exactly that, that she always seems to find that she finds her legs in the stage race in the latter half. Certainly the case here. And uh, we expect to see the uh, Estonian and the Colombian. Uh, they'll be aiming for a stage win today. Um, they were... Uh, on the podium already, where they were delighted to be on the podium, and uh, going one better would be a extremely prestigious victory for them, and a highlight of their careers, in fact, being on the podium. In the prestigious grand finale into Valdivia State, and still the main, the big advantage gained here by Vera Lorza and Kim Lacourt in their yellow, jer in their orange jerseys, Chivita jerseys, denoting the race leader, overall leaders in the CM.com women's category. They'll be able to. Perhaps we'll, we'll see what happens at the end. Perhaps they'll want to celebrate that victory in style and uh, not have to scrap for the stage when they have already won three stages this race so far. So they'll be, uh, they might want to just uh, take some time to celebrate. What do you think, Annika? Um, I don't, th yeah, they will celebrate. 
but um, I'm also pretty sure that they will go for the stage win. This is, after all, the first day where they actually get to wear the orange jerseys in the race, on a, on a stage, on the bikes, and uh, you can rest assured they, they, they all, they'll try and go for the stage win, I'm pretty sure. Um, why wouldn't they? I mean, yes, they rode themselves into orange yesterday, partly due to a massive mechanical uh, of uh, Amy Wakefield breaking uh, her, her wheel, her rear wheel just the, the rim broke and that uh, put uh, this team in orange jerseys but not only because of that but also because they have been riding so consistently and so strong and you don't find yourself uh, at this point uh, uh, in the week or in the race uh, in orange if you're not a strong rider and I'm pretty sure if they can you know just kind of underline or put emphasis uh, on that that fact by winning today's stage yeah, I mean uh, why shouldn't they? And they've also had some bad luck as well, they've, and they've put that behind them. The bad luck didn't cost them 38 or 39 minutes like it cost uh, Wakefield and Lil. Uh, we saw Vera Lawson struggling with that uh, that issue with her shoe. She lost the uh, the fastener and um, seemed to have put that behind her. She used the, uh, the, the old favorite duct tape, which has been playing a theme throughout this race. Uh, the Wakefield using duct tape to, to close up a very serious wound in her arm. Viralosa. Nothing in comparison. Viralosa used it to uh, make some make s some trailside repairs to her shoe. But they put that behind them and now they're riding in the lead in contention for a stage win. But most importantly, in contention for that, uh, we're really looking solid in that leader's jersey. Yeah, and to, to it, they're the really looking super solid. And uh, she was a little bit hesitant yesterday about, you know, believing in the fact that she would uh, ride herself into to Orange. But I feel like now that... Uh, yeah, they're so happy about it, and it will, it will, you know, I would almost say change their lives, but definitely their, you know, professional cycling career to have uh, won the Cape Epic. Absolutely, absolutely. and uh, Annika, you've won in uh, in Valdivia only once. In fact, uh, even though the race has been coming here since 2017, you've won with. Uh, well, 2017 would be a year that you weren't riding. 2018, you were riding with uh, Kate Courtney. 2019, with uh, none other than Anna van der Bregen, the uh, Olympic champion and uh, former world champion too. And uh, that would have been a great moment for you. It was your final victory. Yeah, it was uh, great memories now thinking back on it. And uh, it came down to a sprint finish actually with uh, Candice Lill and Adelheid uh, Moritz who were uh, teaming up with uh, back then. And we had to pull pull a serious tactical game to, to take that victory. But um, I was feeling good and Anna was feeling good and she's a phenomenal sprinter as well. So we, we pulled it off and it was, um, you know, I still get goosebumps uh, thinking about it just now. Well, we're closing in on the finish of this uh, grand finale and uh, the goosebump moments are getting closer for all these riders. We're around about 10 Ks from uh, the uh, finish at Valdivia up uh, towards Paul and uh, they will be uh, very shortly I think going past the uh, Drakenstein uh, Correctional Facility. This lead group Gail Geiger has just gone a little bit up the road. He's clearly feeling super strong today. Not so Lucas Baum. Well not quite as strong as, as his partner. While well, Beers and Blevins are tucked in here we don't have any uh, update on that gap back to the yellow jerseys but uh, we have been uh, assuming and uh, guessing and uh, with, with calculated guessing that, that they are in the virtual uh, yellow jerseys, Beers and Blevins, but that uh, will only be uh, settled once they get to the finish. Singer Racing hanging on the back of this group here, perhaps going to snatch themselves a stage win. That is the Drakenstein Correctional Facility. Uh, the late uh, great Nelson Mandela spent... Uh, 14 months in this facility having been transferred from Robben Island uh, to Polsmont eventually to this prison which was then Victor Fester uh, prison and it was from here on the 11th of February 1990 that uh, Nelson Mandela was uh, released. The house at which he lived for those 14 months is now a uh, national heritage site and uh, this is a significant part of uh, South African uh, history they're riding through on this tar road. So now it is uh, Beers and Blevins who uh, have all to gain here in uh, this uh, stage. Because there's no way that Degger and Baum are going to put uh, five and a half minutes uh, or four minutes into them. 
at this stage. And of course, uh, Schurcher and Frischnick cannot be discounted just yet. We haven't seen them for a while, so we're not entirely sure of, uh, of what that gap is back to them. Well, Gerald, we've actually just received some news from our spotters down on the ground uh, with uh, unofficial timing, or well, official timing not available to us right now. Unofficially, the elastic has snapped. And unfortunately for Scott Sram, they uh, look like they're all over four minutes back on uh, the uh, stage today, which means that they are well and truly out of contention for the yellow jerseys. In, they have the yellow jerseys right now. They're wearing them currently, but uh, we have, having lost over four minutes today, already at the time checks, then overall win looks uh, unlikely. Well, then uh, Eger and Baum will look to perhaps get uh, take a further, another step up the, uh, the the standings, and they might have an opportunity to uh, to take second. They uh, need four minutes on uh, Beers and Blevins here. So that's not likely to happen. This is a time trial here. They're absolutely hammering it along this smooth uh, piece of uh, tar road, heading towards the uh, outer precincts of uh, Valdivie. Who's it going to be? Yeah, it's some very interesting dynamics uh, going on right now. We saw uh, Georg Egger and Lukas Baum, uh, they are trying to go on an attack. It didn't really happen. And maybe they're thinking right now, OK, well, we cannot shake uh, the, the Toyota Specialized 91 team off. OK, so we need to, to, to change focus and uh, try and, and just cooperate and, and go as fast as possible to put in a big, as big a gap as possible on the Scottish ramp because that will, could, you know, see them move into second uh, overall. So it looks like, you know, the, the tactics, the focus uh, has swapped uh, and now Singer Racing can just sit back and they haven't been at the front any second today at all. It tells me it's a, it's a clear telling sign that they have their eyes on a potential stage win today. The tempo at the front of that group is fearsome. Gao uh, Gega, Matt Beers, and uh, Chris Blevin setting a big crowd gathering here at uh, Val de Vie as they await the uh, uh, culmination of the 19th edition of the Absa Cape Epic. Another vintage uh, edition it has been with uh, incredible uh, terrain, wonderful drama, some great uh, finishes and uh, wonderful performances. Courage all around this uh, field of 560 teams still remaining in the, uh, the race. So uh, it's all boiling down here to uh, this little finish because uh, the Beers and Blevins won the prologue, put themselves in the yellow jerseys and then had a disaster on the uh, second day when Blevins took ill, they had stomach cramps and they lost eight minutes, Beers having to nurse him back. At the end of the uh, stage, well, Beers was asked uh, what the plan was. He said, well, look for stage wins. There's still uh, a long way to go. We'll see, see what happens. Uh, they, I don't think, would have, uh, even then, uh, in the most positive mindsets, believed that they would be uh, on the brink of winning the uh, the overall uh, at this stage well they certainly found they chose a good day to have a bad day mm -hmm. and uh, that would have been at stage uh, st uh, we saw stage one disastrous time loss so over eight minutes eight minutes and eight seconds in fact to be exact they did have a slight uh, lead on the uh they, well, obviously they had a lead after the prologue uh, so they finished the day seven uh, eighth uh, was it tenth i think it was tenth on general classification going into stage two they had their they got their bad day out of the way Bad day for uh, Lucas Baum and George Egger, however, was yesterday. Yeah. End the of the penultimate week, yeah. stage, which is not the right time to have a bad day, especially when the racing was so tight. They held the yellow jersey, then had to relinquish that yellow jersey to the Scott Sram team, changing hands or changing shoulders once again. And today, yet again, it looks to be changing shoulders. Just what we... Uh wanted and so often uh, the race delivers but uh, never before has it delivered as tight a racing as we're seeing on this final day yes last year was close um, but uh, at the start of the day it was two minutes and 45 the overall lead on the yellow the yellow jerseys had over Edgar and Baum today it was one minute and 32 over no lesser light than uh, the cross-country world champion last year it was the marathon world champion who was leading this year it was the cross-country world champion and it looks like, as Neil uh, has told us a little bit earlier, that that elastic has uh, snapped back to uh, Schurter and Frischnick. They've tried 
mightily hard today, but it doesn't look as though it's going to work for them. No, not at all. Uh, we did hear them trying to be optimistic uh, at the very start of uh, today, saying, yeah, we really just have to survive those first massive climbs, and then from there on anything can happen. Then uh, we saw, of course, uh, as they should, uh, Toyota the Specialized 91, they put in a massive, like, not an attack, but just like really kept the pace so high from the beginning on, which saw Scott's Ram having to, to sit up and let, let them go, not being uh, able to follow them. And all of a sudden they were out of uh, sight and ma with that maybe also a little bit out of mind. Yes, it's just you can't keep that kind of pressure up. It's very difficult when you're a team riding on your own. They do have each other to cooperate with, but it's just that uh, psychological marker that uh, you have another team with you, also with a similar objective uh, as in not to lose time on overall. Yes, it does make it. We have got timing checks on the virtual GC leaderboard. Scott Stram, MTV Racing. They are 3 minutes 27. There's a race where to stop now. That's what the overall general classification after the final stage would look like. Still a bit to go. Still 5Ks at least to go on some trails, some single track sections in Val de Vie. But... Uh, Scott Sram seemed to have lost over five minutes already. And uh, 33 seconds is all that uh, Egger and Baum need from that, uh, that last calculation to get themselves into second place here, the defending champions, which is in itself would be a remarkable performance after the travails they had uh, yesterday. Now with uh, our CM.com women's uh, riders, they're on uh, the uh, knickknacks climb, and uh, this is on the far side of the Dwarfs Refuge. And it looks like Calderon and uh, Steenberg have, have yeah, they, they got away? No, they, I or think they they're still with, actually just in front of uh, the orange uh, jerseys yeah. of Kim Decord and Vera Losa. So still riding all together and uh, for sure uh, Cannondale, uh, Vas Arabe, they have really, really also come strong towards the end mm. of uh, this year's race, uh, as has of course uh, Kim Lecord uh, and Vera Losa, and uh, that's why we now see them in uh, in orange. Of course, the, the big question of today is, um, yeah, how will this final unfold? Will Kim Lecord and Vera Losa go for a stage win, or will they say, okay, to Canandel Vas Arabe, you've been going so strong, we've been sitting on your wheel whole day, uh, we, we're gonna let you take the stage win because our main goal is to to get the, the overall GC win, so and they seem pretty secure in that position um, as things stand right now. Yes, they had 25 minutes uh, on the GC going into the stage over the I say unfortunate Amy Wakefield and uh, Candace Lill, who'd done so much through the week to re to regain uh, uh, or take the lead in the overall. In fact, they took it the day that Amy Wakefield uh, suffered that serious gash to her, her left arm. But the recovery was uh, incredible. She spent, uh, well, I think she had four hours sleep having had the surgery, got up uh, and uh, continued on. Defensive day just to, to see how they went on uh, stage two. Then they uh, attacked a little on stage three to build on the lead. They got eight minutes uh, a lead by the end of that stage. Uh, Lossa and uh, the court had lost uh, quite a lot of time on the uh, first stage, but kept uh, fighting and kept uh, racing and won themselves three stages and put themselves right in the frame and uh, never gave up and uh, the opportunity well presented itself yesterday thanks to the uh, unfortunate incidents uh, that saw Wakefield's back wheel a crack and uh, so Lawser and the court find themselves in the overall lead. Turn off the uh, tar road now for our leading men. Beers and Blevins ahead here and uh, heading towards glory as well. The Toyota Specialized 91 team and uh, behind them, the race defending champions, Gao Gega and Lucas Baum of Albea Liet Speed Company. Uh, they're, I think, now, barring any serious incidents as they enter the outer precincts of uh, Val de Vie, that there is no likelihood that uh, Beers and Blevins are going to lose this title. It's about whether uh, they can win the stage, whether they want to win the stage, and uh, whether Fry and uh, Steve John have an opportunity to snatch a win here. They've sat in here like pilot fish for the whole day and not done a stitch of work, haven't got involved in the racing, and uh, they are going to try and find a way through here. And the other thing is, of course, will Egger and Baum do enough to put in uh, uh, just about half a minute into half a minute more into uh, Schurter and Frischneck and take second place overall? 
Well, that's the objective. And second place, the difference in prize money, of course, between second and third place, that's significant. So they'll be quite motivated. But uh, just to, to gain a few seconds may sacrifice their chances of a stage win. They'll be uh, highly aware of the fact that Singer Racing have had a free ride up until now. And uh, it's hard to tell what their objective is, what their priority is, but they'll need to decide what their priority is right now. Because uh, whatever they focus on, they... Uh, they may well uh, just saw some wildlife in the background there. Let's hope that it doesn't interfere with it. It's been a bit of a theme over the last couple of days, but uh, it looks like that, uh, that danger is well out of the way as uh, Matt Beers is uh, leading through the uh, single track section. They know that this single track section is uh, marks, well, you could say, the end. There is no uh, rise or fall. It's a very flat section, section that is used very often by the residents of the Valdevi estate. The riders, uh, the top riders in the world, as they head through this, they know it's a marker that they're very close to the end. And also a marker where some tactical advantage could play into the hands of uh, the pairing of Matt Beers and Christopher Blevins. They've uh, played this game before. They know that uh, Matt Beers going up ahead. Matt has uh, already intimated he's not necessarily the fastest sprinter of the two. Blevins, on the other hand, is extremely quick. And... Uh, any of these other teams want to have uh, a chance at a stage when they'll need to get on terms with uh, what the pairing of Beers and Blevins are up to right now. Beers on the front. All he has to do is create a bit of a gap. He has to cross the line first. Uh, and the time taken is, will be, is always by the second rider who crosses the line. And that's the key here. That uh, second rider, if you're uh, the like of, likes of uh, Lucas Baum, or Martin Fry, Simon Stiepjohn, you need to beat the second place rider, not the first place rider. Toyota Specialized 91, they're doing it again. The exactly. same tactic that when they come into the final, getting into those last kilometers to the finish line. We know that Matt, he is such a powerful rider, but he's, uh, he, he's, he's very good at those longer, sustained, uh, high power uh, efforts. So for him, it's all about really applying pressure here uh, as much as he, he can. And uh, hopefully he can create a little bit of a gap to uh, uh, Lucas Baum and Georg Egger here on his wheel. And that will leave it for Chris Blevins here in fourth position at the moment right now to kind of sprint past those two riders, which we know that he has a very decent sprint. Uh, so, you know, the tactics is the same that we've seen every single time almost when they take a stage win because they are like, they are so clever when it comes to these, these, uh, these uh, tactical finishes and they're doing it over again here. Well, the teams out front right now as we're looking at, they might not have all of the information that we have in the studio right now. In terms of the time gaps, back to uh, Nino Schurter and Andre Frischenicht, they, they will be hesitant to play any cat and mouse games because cat and mouse does cost you time. If you've got a team behind chasing to gain back the time or try to limit the damage, the cat and mouse tactics, uh, they, the tacticians like Chris Levin's very clever tactician, he'll know not to play too many games in the lead up into the finish in the sprint finish. And what uh, Chris could do right now is kind of almost create a little bit of a gap between him and the rider in front of him because that would kind of put the uh, singer racing uh, who are now on his wheel a little bit on the back foot they will have to you know cover a longer distance to to take the the win they're well, on singer racing all eyes on singer racing now we have to see what they do now is the time if they want to make any kind of move now is the time to make an attack before they reach the finish they, when they reach the finish shoot, the, uh, the barrier finish shoot, that might be too late to launch an attack, but we're all eyes on uh, Martin Fry and Simon Stibjohn right now. It's a familiar finish this to all these riders. Last year it was Egger and Barnum on their own. Now they have a battle here. Egger is going to go uh, on his own. Are they playing a game here? In fact, it's uh, Baum who's gone ahead. Here comes Singer Racing now. They are having a go at the uh, stage here. They've put a man up front. And it is Simon Stipjan, I think, has gone ahead. And uh, they've got their second rider is well positioned. This is the uh, carbon copy of what uh, Toyota 91 Specialized have done. And they look as though they're quite happy to let that go. Uh, they would like to have been in the mix there, but Blevins is hanging on as all for all he can to uh, 
to make contact with Matt Beers, but it is Singer Racing who've uh, played a very canny card here to get ahead of... Oh! oh! Now that is a terrible fall. Down he goes. And that is a serious fall and a real disappointment for Singer Racing. Their opportunity, the stage win goes. And now Egger and Baum are in the pound seats. Well, that is the drama that can unfold right on the uh, finish uh, last 500 meters. Over the little bridge, onto the last of the uh, little grass uh, mounds here. Well, he's looking over his shoulder. He's not sure. Uh, what is uh, the situation behind? He won't see his partner. It's Egger and Baum, and then uh, Toyota Specialized 91. Well, that's uh, the one half of the Singer racing team didn't see what happened and uh, won't have known. He'll be looking back for his partner, looking to see if his partner gets through the uh, tough, the tricky section. Didn't manage to uh, make a move. See the, the back of the, uh, of the uh, field marked by Stefan Sam as they head through the finishing shoot. Egger and Baum, it looks like. It is uh, Gail Gegger and uh, Lucas Baum who are going to win the final stage as they did a year ago here at Val de Vie. It is Aubert Speed Company who take the grand finale victory. And just uh, around 20 meters behind them, the overall race winners. It'll wait uh, till the, the yellow jerseys do come in. Disappointment for. Uh, the singer racing pair but Chris Blevins and Matt Beers have rolled across the line no big celebrations for them just yet because they don't know what the gap is back to the uh, yellow jersey of Nino Schurter and Refreshnik the clock is ticking right now but a drama filled last uh, kilometer with Georg Eger and Lucas Baum and the singer racing pair and of course Beers and Blevins uh, it all is going to come down to the clock which is ticking now as we await the arrival of the yellow jersey Jerseys. What a week it has been for these two teams. Well, here it is. Uh, great, great disappointment. <laughs> a terrible mistake from Martin Fry as he went through. The, you could just see the frantic pace as they went through that final section. No major obstacles at all. Think what uh, Martin Fry has overcome in terms of obstacles over these eight days. And just one small mistake on the grass on a seemingly innocuous part of the uh, of the race really weren't counted in the finale coming into the finish shoot made an error and went over his handlebars they will rue that day they had a chance at a prestigious stage win not to be they still will be on the podium but uh, the smiles won't be as great as if they've uh, managed to hold it together they looked really good for that and just handing it there to they go they, they know. know. They are the champions. Beers and Blevins. The clock has ticked beyond 1 minute and 32. And Matt Beers has won the Absa Cape Epic for the second time. Chris Blevins for the first time. And it is pure joy and celebration for the Toyota Specialized pair after a roller coaster week that saw them lose 8 minutes, be 7 minutes down on the general classification after stage 1. They fought, they hung in, they won stages and they played canny uh, sprint finishes and it has all come down to this for Toyota Specialized 91. They are the champions in 2023. Matt Beers a second win. Christopher Blevins, uh, they had a tough year last year. Christopher Blevins will be absolutely delighted with that. Matt Beers a familiar feeling but no less excited about winning his second Absa Cape Epic. One in 2021. And now in 2023, two victories for the South African, the second South African to win the Absa Cape Epic. Well, what uh, a week of drama culminating in rich and richly deserved celebrations here for Matt Beers and uh, Chris Blevins. Just amazing. I mean, the, the stories that this, uh, this race has given us this week, it's quite unbelievable. And, you know, Nobody, no, none of uh, the racers here at the very sharp end of the field could have ever predicted the drama that we would have to, to see and witness uh, this week. They all like kudos to all teams to hang in there and fight day in, day out. And uh, this year it was uh, Toyota Specialized 91 who came out victorious. Well, it is a tactical uh, masterclass we've seen from this pair throughout the week. They kept themselves in the picture. They never gave up. They never uh, relinqu relinquished the thought how narrow and small it might have been of actually taking the win. And uh, well, there's uh, Tristan Nokia who's played a big role today. He didn't have to do anything, but he was there in uh, position should Blevins and Beers have uh, a problem. And uh, well, a big uh, hug from. Uh, they had a specialized Southern Africa there 
Bobby Behan as uh, they will be celebrating once again. The legacy continues. Uh, the uh, Toyota Specialized 91 team again. Uh, they lost out last year, but they're back on the top step of the podium. Here come the yellow jerseys closing in on the uh, finish. Nino Schurter and Andre Frischnecht. They will not be wearing those when it comes to podium time. Let's go to the finish and uh, an interview with Edgar and Baum. Storming stage, you went up uh, the first climb together with the Toyota Specialized 91. Um, great ride out there. Are you happy with the stage win? Uh, well, yeah, um, I mean, right now the feeling is, uh, is dominated by the disappointment of not winning the, the overall. Um, I think we showed some consistent uh, performance over the days. Unfortunately, with a big mechanical <laughs> uh, today, yeah, I was I was suffering quite a lot. I didn't have the legs, or so, um, or rather, my back uh, came back. The big problem I had in front of uh, the Cape Epic. Now I can say it publicly. Uh, I had major issues on my on my back and uh, beforehand. But well, uh, I'm happy with uh, with our performance. I'm happy that I could even able to to start here. And um, yeah, today was a tough stage. Toyota was, was strong the last days. Uh, they, they showed great form over, over the first climb. We could barely follow. Um, yeah, we'll see. Uh, we'll come back next year. Thanks a lot, guys, and congratulations. Thank you. Uh, there we have it from Lucas Baum. Big back issues coming into the race. They hung in and. Uh, well, it didn't go quite according to plan uh, as it did a year ago. He suffered uh, today, as he said. Nino Schurter and Andre Frischnecht, well, they uh, had the yellow jersey through the week and uh, looked uh, pretty strong with that, but it was uh, not to be as uh, today. They lost their 1 minute and 32 second lead over uh, spe Toyota Specialized 91. And uh, they will be rolling in in fifth place today because Canyon Northwaves, Andreas Sevot and Martin Storsek have crossed the line five minutes and 14 down. And Schurter and Frischnick five minutes and 53 down, which should put them now in third place on general classification because Eger and Baum started the day five minutes and 32 seconds behind them uh, at the start of the day. So disappointment for Nino Schurter in his pursuit of a third Absa Cape Epic title, it's not to be here at Val No, but uh, you can rest assured that he will come back and, uh, you know, he will, he's always on the hunt and he will, he will come back and hunt uh, down the, the title again. Yeah, he doesn't take, uh, no one takes losing uh, easily and uh, that's uh, something that will just inspire and spark him to come back and uh, try and claim that uh, third title try as he might this year just didn't pan out the way they uh, wanted to so beers and blevins are the champions in 2023 beers won in 2021 in the october epic with jordan saru uh, the frenchman and uh, then uh, last year he and uh, chris blevins teamed up it didn't go uh, their way yesterday beers had some uh, torrid days uh, particularly uh, day two and uh, he suffered and they lost big time they did lose big time this year that man on stage one was the sufferer they lost uh, they, they finished seven minutes down on general classification in eighth place and uh, they fought their way back and uh, Andrew Kirby the uh, of uh, Toyota South Africa there passionate cyclist and man who's ridden this event a number of times congratulates uh, both Chris Blevins and uh, Matt Beers, and we'll hear from them shortly as Jazz Kushke is going to chat to them now. Christopher Blevins, Matt Beers, absolutely storming ride. You put the bit between the teeth there after the first climb and basically said, um, see you later. Yeah, there's only one way to do it today. Um, and like I said before, it was, a, it was a beautiful opportunity to be able to go for it. You know, you train and uh, you go through so much hard work for moments like that. So it's just, yeah, it was special to put it together and um, experience that. Matt Beers, multiple stage wins in the week with a one bad luck day. Uh, is this one sweeter than the first one in some ways? Yeah, I mean, this is, <laughs> obviously we had to come from a dark place on the first day and um, I think it just shows our partnership and how strong it is and how much we believe in each other. And um, it's just absolutely unreal all the support we had on route and I think we were just running off complete adrenaline and <laughs> we're pretty spent now. 
And did you have sort of an idea of the time gap out on the course there, or was it just head down the whole way? Yeah, um, we heard little bits and pieces, but they never make you feel too comfortable. So, um, I mean, up until the line, we went as absolute hard as we could. I kind of wish someone told us if we had it or not, so I didn't have to suffer so much. Um, but it's obviously all worth it. And, um, yeah, it's just an honor. It really is. And lots of mud on the jerseys there with the trail still quite wet after the days of rain we've had. Yeah, it was still pretty wet out there. Um, we had to just be careful to see if we didn't want to um, crash or do anything stupid. But, I mean, we, I think we rode it, we executed it perfectly, and, um, yeah, that's all you can ask for. Congratulations, guys. Go and enjoy the celebrations. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, emotional times for Chris Blevins and uh, Matt Beers, winners in uh, 2023 here at the uh, Absa Cape Epic. Chris Blevins becomes the 23rd man to uh, win the Absa Cape Epic. Uh, Beers, of course, won it in 2021. The Bulls uh, clearly having a, a good uh, second half of the week here as uh, they come home together with the Canon Northwave uh, 2 team. So this is uh, Alba Licata and Axel Rudel Cortinat. All uh, fist pump with their rivals. That's uh, the true spirit of the Absa Cape Epic. And uh, Alba Licata has in fact ridden with the, uh, the Canyon team, the Canyon Factory Racing team in the past. So he'll still, be, uh, still have enjoy good ties there and uh, just enjoy and soak up the atmosphere as he pulls into the finish in the Valdivia estate. Rudel Cortina, a young man from France, 23 years old, but uh, a great uh, week of riding the Absa Cape Epic. I'm sure we'll see him come back here again in years to come. Rakoch and Stutzman likewise. Let's head back down uh, to uh, Jazz. Nino Schurter, tough day out there. Um, are you slightly disappointed, clearly, obviously? Yeah, sure, yeah, it was a tough day. <laughs> For sure we are disappointed, yeah. Uh, we expect more, but uh, yeah, it was, a, it was the maximum that we could do. Um, the other two were just stronger than us, so that's racing. Did you have some ideas of the time checks out there and, and how much you needed to bring back? Yeah, you know, we lost already at the first climb and... Uh, um, yeah, if you struggle already at the first climb, it's going to be a hard one to pull back, time even back. But for a long time, yeah, I think we were like one to two minutes. But then in the end, we were in two and they were, I don't know how many, they were in front riding together. So, yeah, it was a tough day. Uh, but yeah, that's racing. And still uh, enjoyable to come into Valdivie with such a big crowd here yeah, and so much support on route. Yeah, sure, it's always nice. <laughs> After such a such hard eight days, we finally be at the finish. But sure, it would be nicer if we can cross it with a with a celebration. Well, congratulations on your week, anyway. Thank you. Thank you. You know, Schurter, uh, disappointed. Uh, you can uh, sense that uh, from that interview. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, he's uh, he's very much a, uh, an all or nothing kind of yeah, rider. A winner, isn't he? Exactly. Yeah, and this is this is not uh, satisfying for him. So, like I said, I think we, we haven't seen the last of Nils uh, at this race. Well, just to, to continue, Lecatra and Rudel Cortina were seventh. Vakoc and Stutzman eighth. Uh, Roberto Bumatin and Miguel Mu uh, Munoz Moreno. We're in uh, ninth place. They've just rolled across the line 10 minutes and 57 uh, seconds down on the uh, overall uh, stage winners today. And uh, rolling into uh, the finish line, a really good day this is for this pair of uh, Andri Bili and uh, Fadri Barandun, uh, the uh, Swiss pair. Bernina Sport Scott, their best day by a country mile. They are in 10th place, top 10 on the grand finale day. They're rolling in, in the grand finale in 10th spot. So impressive still for any rider. And, uh, we saw the uh, emotions run high with the Canadel Bass Arabe team, the Spanish riders coming in. Just uh, there's a bit of, a I guess, a bit of a relief, a bit of joy, and uh, a mix of emotions for everyone as they as they <laughs> arrive. <laughs> At this point, you're just like you. It's hard to describe just how fatigued you are. 
So the South African pair, the leaders in the Apps African jerseys, Philip Bass and his partner, Alex Miller, the young man from Namibia, they are going to once again win this jersey. I say once again, the team has won it again. Miller for the first time, Bass for the fifth time. The Apps African jerseys, they had ambitions of getting on the podium overall, but uh, not to be. But Paigo Euro is still a consolation for them and a great ride by this pair. They uh, will roll him uh, today, 13th on the day, behind the uh, Buff Megamo uh, Quartet. They're all... Uh, riding together they have done for the last two days it seems and uh, they uh, base and uh, miller leaders and winners of the absa african jersey miller well i fancy he'll ever have, have a future in this uh, race in years to come real talent from namibia the national champion and certainly a big learning curve uh, and starting to build his campaign as a uh, as a future star of the sport and, and even the current star of, uh, of the sport but uh, we expect to see more of miller in the coming years Excited to see how he performs. And Paiga Eurostiel having performed excellently over this week. And uh, Egger and Baum, the stage belonged to the Germans, Orbia Lead Speed Company. They're used to winning in uh, Val de Vie. Now it's the second win in a row. Um, but uh, as we heard from uh, Lucas Baum, disappointed not to take the overall. Beers and Blevins second on the day. And that was largely due to the mistake from Martin Fry, the crash. The Singer Racing were perfectly positioned for a stage win, but just uh, Fry coming unstuck, going over the bars just in the final kilometer. And Nokia um, crossed the line in the fourth spot, but uh, fifth, Seavolt and Stozek, Canyon Northwave, Schurter and Frischnecht, sixth on the day, but the big losers on overall general classification. GC. We have Beers and Blevins, Matthew Beers' second victory, Blevins' first, and uh, George Egger, and Lucas Baum, second spot, Orbia Lead Speed Company, Nino Schurter and Frischnick sliding off the, off the lead, out of the yellow jerseys, sliding down to third overall. Tell you the efforts of Singer Racing have paid off, and uh, well, what might have been for a lot of teams, but for them, they finished 14th. They've made up uh, like 35 places in the last couple of days. So really, really a big ride by them, and uh, they'll be encouraged by that. And I'm sure that Stevie and uh, Martin Fry will be back here to make a proper assault on this uh, in years to come. But just four minutes and 11 seconds between the top three. Let's hear from uh, the winners of the uh, Absa African jersey. Phil Bass and Alex Miller. Alex Miller, you consolidated uh, the Afri Absa African red jersey. You must be pretty happy with that. Um, yeah, that's a, a nice prize for us uh, after quite a hard week. Um, yeah, that's one one thing we ticked, ticked off. Uh, the other thing was, uh, yeah, we wanted to get a stage win, but yeah, with the GC race so close, uh, the guys were just going super hard every day, and uh, yeah, we just didn't have the opportunity and the legs for, for that. But otherwise, uh, yeah, just a great week. And your multiple years of experience in this race, how did uh, this week compare to you? Obviously, I mentioned the conditions earlier on. It's been a tough week. Yeah, it was a really tough week. Um, and like I mentioned, uh, the competition, you know, is, uh, yeah, was just next level uh, this year. And um, yeah, but I mean, it's, it's great for the event and it's great for the sport. And obviously, you guys are super happy to have gotten through the week uh, with no mechanicals and no other big issues. Yes, uh, yeah, we were very lucky. I think we uh, looked after the equipment very well. and. Uh, uh, yeah, it's my first Absa Cape Epic, so I couldn't be more happy to take the red jersey. Like Phil said, a stage win would have been nice, but I mean, the level of racing uh, that happens at the front is just insane. And yeah, I'd just like to say a big thanks to the team and to Phil um, for pulling me through this one. Great racing, guys. Congrats. Yeah, sure. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thanks. Phil Bass, Alex uh, Miller, the uh, Paga Eurosteel team who have... Uh, uh, done themselves proud uh, today as uh, Keegan Svensson and Lachlan Morton are coming in. They've had a, a strong second half of the week and uh, they're just behind them. Christoph Sarza uh, looks like riding on his own there. Uh, Paul Mania may be just around the corner. So we have the winners in in the uh, elite men's category. The CM.com women are making their way towards the finish here at Val de Vie. So, the uh, pair of Lachlan Morton and uh, Keegan Swenson. Morton, uh, who rides for the EF Easy Post t team on the road, but perhaps less and less so. He does their alternate program. He's uh, 
back here for the second Absa Cape Epic together with Keegan Swenson, who rode last year with Maxi Marot, and they've had a really good uh, good week. Uh, Swenson's third uh, Absa Cape Epic, and certainly uh, his best this uh, performance with Morton. They've got better and better as the week has gone on. Uh, I think they'll finish uh, overall probably just outside the top ten, but a really uh, positive ride by this pair today. And Swenson uh, will remember this stage last year. They, in fact, he was uh, third. He got onto the podium in the grand finale, the prestigious grand finale in De uh, riding with Maxi Marot, the French, the French cross-country star. Well, that's uh, a beautiful sight, isn't it? Val de Ville is around the corner for our CM.com uh, women's race as they head towards the finish. And it uh, looks like the orange uh, leaders' jerseys and the Canada Vas Arabe have been together all day today. And it's going to come down to these two uh, for the stage win. Now, Kim Lacourt and uh, Vera Lossa having a chat there. She looked like they might be sharing some nutrition. But uh, who's it going to be to take the stage win? Oh, I, I still believe uh, that Efficient Infinity ensured that they will, you know, want to be the ones rolling across the phalange line as uh, the, the, uh, the first today. It would be like, you know, almost like the perfect end to, to this week, to the story of this week. Because, uh, I mean, what, the, what all of these teams have had to grow through. And now this team finding themselves in, in yellow. And uh, why should they not uh, make a statement today? may have to sprint it then yeah they may have to sprint it and uh, we know that they they're really clear when it, it comes to tactical finishes we saw them play uh, road tactics uh, in the final uh, to take stage wins and uh, yeah they're just setting themselves uh, up perfectly for a finish like that today highly pedigreed uh, riders both uh, on the road and on a mountain bike both Kim Lacourt and Vera Lossa champions of their respective countries Mauritius and uh, Namibia and uh, they go through the final uh, water point along the railway track a little bit and then uh, under the bridge which has been uh, so well crafted and uh, prepared to allow the riders to get underneath the uh, and you can road. see here, uh, I think Vera Lo uh, Kim Lacourt was actually stopping at the mm. neutral feeding station to, to take on some, uh, some nutrition here. So the question is now that they, can they ca can close that gap? And they, if they close the gap, then uh, what will happen then? We are around 20 k's from the finish in the women's cm.com race and the orange jersey wearers Vera Lossa and Kim Lacourt of Efficient Infinity Insure are the overall race leaders but uh, right now they're in their second place on the stage as they cross underneath or they go underneath the road that uh, connects Paul with Franschuk and just ahead of them the Canada Vas Arabe team of Vieta Stenberg and uh, her partner Monica Calderon who've uh, really just had a resurgent last uh, couple of days find themselves on the podium and now they find themselves in a really good position to uh, end the week uh, with a uh, win on the prestigious grand finale day. The question is, will the uh, orange jerseys of Loza and uh, Lacourt be content to let them go and have their bit and then uh, roll in a few minutes or a few seconds later in celebration or will they decide to uh, have a glory sprint and try and take the win uh, on the last day? Annika believes that might uh, is the way it they will probably want to finish it. Um, they have the skills, we know. They've got uh, the power and the uh, sprinting skills. They've both uh, won road race sprints uh, very recently uh, at uh, a very high level. So they've got that, uh, that uh, in them. These two, uh, Calderon and Steinberg, are out and out uh, marathon uh, racers. So it'll be interesting to see how, they, uh, how this all unfolds. But you can see that uh, Kim and Vera, they have uh, the strength to just ever so slowly uh, close the gap again. And uh, right now there's a men's team kind of uh, between them, but uh, I'm pretty sure that Kim and Vera, they're not too worried about that. Uh, they know as soon as the opportunity comes, they can uh, easily just squeeze around those two riders and uh, there will be uh, no issue at all. Indeed, they look very much in control. Wonderful finish uh, for the Pump for Peace pair there, Tumelo Marke and Unati Ngomalo. Now they do get past that team as they go past the Hurt Drakenstein Country Club. So they are. There's a, they're not going to let them go, that's for sure. Now, they're 
running along this uh, pathway, the uh, cycle path that uh, is built between uh, Paul and Franschuk. Uh, Kim Lord, a driving force behind this here. It's been a wonderful initiative. Let's go to uh, the uh, finish line and hear from uh, a legend in the EPSA Cape Epic parlance. Christoph Sazer, you've got the champagne in hand, a big smile on your face. You're telling me offline there that you were getting the splits at each water point just to know that your boys were up front, were in the lead. Yeah, that was the uh, biggest excitement. Uh, I could feel, you know, there was so much energy yesterday in the team, and that's so important. That just lifts up everybody's game. Unfortunately, our two youngsters, the Frenchies, they had a very rough night. They spent more more time in, uh, in the bathroom, and we really didn't know if they can race or not. So, well... You know, you can you can roll over the start line and then and then your partner can go. So Jason and I, we just went. Yeah. Uh, you never know. You know, you can help. So that was the very very most important that that the A team is winning and they did it. It's, uh, it's super super cool and I can't wait to celebrate with them. And you mentioned Tristan. He had a really strong ride as well. He stayed with the front bunch the whole way. It was a good ride for the youngster. Yes, totally. He's he's, uh, he's capable to do it. Obviously, you know, I, I see. With us, if you have a little bit of an easier day, you have more on the next day. Um, incredible ride for him, and you know, that also plays such a big role of the A-team. You know, you have a backup, um, there's a rider, and, and it also confuses the other. Maybe it even played in our role, because the others had no idea what's going on. Why is Tristan here alone, and he's not with, uh, with Adrian? Um, it looks like they can finish, I really hope so. Um, they're still far out on the route, and... Uh, yeah, I'm sure they're cheering themselves up. They have some uh, toilet paper in the in the pocket, so I think they'll make it to them. Thanks a lot for the great insights, and we'll let you go and get the celebration started. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Christoph Saas, of course, a five-time winner and uh, very much uh, an integral part of the specialized setup. His partner, Paul Mania, also um, seemingly uh, ill. The French uh, obviously taking a few hits today. Uh, Adrian, B, uh, Adrian Boishas, who was uh, Tristan Nokia's partner, uh, falling ill as well. So um, both those riders finishing on their own. Maybe, uh, be, I'm not sure that Boishas is still uh, on the road. Mania, it sounds like, is still on the road. Well, Mania is uh, Christoph Salzer's partner. We have, uh, he would be characterized by the uh, bright pink bike that he's been riding. In fact, if you have a look at uh, the Epic Series YouTube channel, you'll be able to see a feature on that like a spectacular paint job, but uh, not such a spectacular day for the young French rider, part of the Trinity Racing Team. Uh, big hope for French cycling and world cycling, in fact. Uh, it's part of the uh, prestigious program and feeding, uh, no doubt, will be fed into some of the big teams uh, in the very near future. We'll see his name in lights at some of the other massive races uh, on the world calendar. Yeah, and in the women's race, it's uh, an impressive uh, effort uh, here by Kim Lecourt and Vera Losa. You know, just to stay com some composed, just to keep, you know, control over the race. And, uh, yeah, they're looking better and better. And, uh, you know, they're trying not to celebrate too much uh, just yet. But you can rest assured that they, they will be so thrilled and so delighted to, to cross that finish line. And the Franschuk Football Club youngsters lining the entrance to Ludus Magnus here and welcoming the riders in. It's so cool. The youngsters from uh, Franschuk getting a chance to get up close and uh, see these uh, super athletes charging. Yeah, there's no shortage of, e of effort here at the front here. There's no coasting into the finish for this slot. They are riding absolutely uh, to the limit. Here are also Kim Lecourt and Greta Sternberg and Monica Calderon. No... Uh, sign I'm afraid of a uh, Candacil and Amy Wakefield and that has been one of the stories of so many different stories of emotion heartbreak and uh, courage and determination throughout the week of uh, Amy Wakefield and uh, Candace Lil it's been uh, a drama filled week for them sadly they won't be uh, winning this race they looked as though they were going to uh, at the start of yesterday's stage but uh, we know that so much happened yesterday to uh, contrive against them. So let's uh, go down to the finish line and hear from uh, the Pump for Peace team. Please welcome to Balvenie, the home of the 
Konati and Tamilo, how uh, big is this occasion coming into Valdevi today? Uh, for me, it's very, it's amazing that I finished eight days of racing. So I'm very proud of what we did today, me and Tomero. So yeah, I'm very happy about today. And how good is it to be part of a team outfit uh, like Team Pump for Peace Racing Team with all the backup and the support? I mean, it's a really great support we get from the team and, and uh, we are really happy to be getting this support. I mean, uh, racing at this level, I mean, the racing the KPFP uh, was a dream and this uh, it came through this week. Uh, and the conditions were really tough all week, lots of weather. How do you deal with that kind of um, sort of conditions and stay motivated for the next day? Yeah, the past two days was very challenging. The rain, it was very challenging. Even climbing, it was like climbing on the river. So yeah, we're just keeping consistent on that part. But we actually had a good race on that day. The one that the condition was super because we had a bad start, so we were like trying to push as hard as we can. We ended up passing some of the guys. So we ended up having a nice, good result end of the day. Well, congratulations on your results, and we'll let you go get cleaned up. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Tamela Marke from Lesotho, the Lesotho Marathon Champion, and uh, Unati Mamalo fighting for Pump for Peace, the team uh, under the guidance and support of uh, uh, the great Ariane Luti. A rider who's won this uh, event five times across two different categories and three times with uh, you, Annika. Yeah, she was uh, really the reason why I actually got into this race uh, in the first place. Uh, I remember we met at Marathon Wells in, I think it was Peter Marysburg, uh, or, or was it before that? Anyways, we at some point we ended up having dinner together with the same group of people. And she was starting to tell me about, you know, South African stage racing and uh, she was looking for a partner and, uh, you know, if I, if I could be interested in, in, in partnering up with her. And, uh, you know, back then I was still, well, I would say relatively new into cycling, definitely relatively new into international, you know, cycling internationally. And I was like, yeah, that sounds super exciting. I'm, I'm up for it. And uh, so in 2013, uh, we actually did the stage race here in South Africa together at the end of the year and uh, that uh, with that race we really you know got to 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 work well together as a team and uh, then uh, we decided to take on uh, Epic uh, the following uh, uh, spring and uh, in March and uh, yeah we did uh, three races uh, in a row and uh, yeah she's really a, a big part of uh, my whole Epic journey for sure. It's great to see her still very much part of the race and part of the racing and uh being a mentor to the uh, Pump for Peace riders and Jumelo and Unati had a fantastic day. Top 20 today and that's riding alongside some big names of the sport. Right, let's go pop down to the finish as the uh, women uh, get closer and closer towards the finish. Let's go to the finish in here from Alvin Licata. And here Axel and uh, Alban, another good day even after yesterday's tough effort. Yeah, the last day of the Cafe Peak was way or, uh, difficult, but uh, very happy to finish on the good note. And uh, for me, finish my first epic with uh, an, uh, an incredible man is really, really amazing. And Alban, you mentioned today was quite tough. I mean, 80Ks and 2,400 meters of climbing, it's a pretty solid last day. Yeah, 100%. Uh, it was also very wet today, slippery. The, the downs were tricky to ride, um, easy to crash today. But also the, the climbing was uh, like really steep and long and uh, it was a very challenging um, stage, final stage. Normally we do it a little bit shorter, so hopefully next year they change it a little bit. But uh, anyway, it was a really good, the last two yeah, days you know, were really good and we like to uh, be in the, in the mix with the uh, top 10. Um, so now uh, we have a really nice finish. Axel has his, uh, finished his first um, Cape Epic and he has maybe a lot more to go. And um, yeah, really looking forward now to the celebration in the evening. Enjoy that celebration. Thanks a lot. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Up on Axel Rudil Cortina, speaking of the finish, and it's notable how many young French riders so uh, we've got uh, in the uh, in the uh, mix here at the Absa Cape Epic. So uh, good to see Mania. Boitius and of course uh, Cortinat. So here we go. This is the uh, second on GC, third on the stage at the moment. Amy Wakefield and Candice Lill. As we said, they have had uh, some week 
In fact, they've had some months, if you think about it. Andy Wakefield had uh, illness and difficulties coming into the event with uh, kidney stones and then uh, uh, didn't have a partner when Irina Lichelswab pulled out and uh, Candace Lill knew from a little bit earlier that she wasn't going to be uh, riding with Mariska Strauss. And uh, just a couple of weeks before the event, the question was asked and uh, yes, they decided to ride together. And uh, we know what happened on the first day. Amy Wakefield on the first stage, the stage one Wakefield uh, hit a, a recently pruned uh, fruit tree and gashed her left bicep very seriously. Some calm, cool and composed uh, work by her and Candace Lill. They duct taped the wound closed and nice and tight and they managed to uh, carry on riding and not only that they rode on uh, and into the lead on that stage and into the uh, leaders jerseys at the end of that stage taking it from uh, Gomez Viafan and Nash and they held it all the way to uh, yesterday the end of yesterday's stage when we know what happened uh, with the drama in the back wheel of Amy Wakefield so it's been a real roller coaster for this pair yeah I mean it's it's natural that throughout the uh, week like this you know emotionally you go through highs and lows but this team, this pairing, like the highs and lows that they went through are on the very extremes. And you know, it's a, uh, I've been in this situation myself, uh, you know, going from looking at a relatively, you know, comfortable winner of a race in 2018. I was uh, leading uh, uh, world champs uh, in uh, Switzerland and only to get overtaken on the very last lap. You know, and feelings like that, uh, it's, it's, it's really devastating. It, it really breaks you a little bit and it certainly broke me back then. And, uh, you know, it takes some time to recover from that, you know, almost being there so close to the finish line to being the winner. And then, you know, like very last minute, it doesn't really happen. So I can only feel for these riders and no matter what, they are still winners uh, in, my, in my opinion, just because, you know, what they had to go through is absolutely unbelievable. And uh, I was uh, chatting a little with the riders uh, yesterday and I saw, you know, Darren Lil and he, had, he actually had tears in his eyes. I mean, you cannot understand what it means to these riders. It's, it's not just, you know, any race, it is the race and uh, it means a lot. Yeah, potentially sort of uh, career changing for, for particularly uh, these uh, South African riders who, you know, there's no secret, it's a struggle to find sponsors and support. Let's go to uh, Isla Stowe, who's on board and right behind uh, the race leading in the battle here. Isla, we are all dis d thinking of how this is going to unfold. How do you see it happening? Well, just a few moments ago, the two teams were having some negotiations and it seems like Orange is happy for Cannondale to take the win as long as they get them safely to the end. So we'll see how it plays out but I think things are kind of neutralizing now between the two teams. They're not as aggressive. Well, it was a while ago they were going quite hard um, as they came uh, underneath the uh, road and then uh, headed through Ludus Magnus. So that's obviously been the negotiation. Uh, settled, settled. No risks for the orange jerseys then. Sorry, can you repeat that? So they, 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 they've settled on uh, not taking any risks and getting safely to the finish. They just want orange in the, in the bag and I think with 15 kilometers to go they can really see the end in sight and just want to get there safely and quickly as possible. A chance to talk to you. We haven't uh, been able to speak to our e-bikers out there. The trails today, uh, Isla, there's been a lot of rain, but it's looked pretty good. I think we might have lost Isla. She might be able to hear us, but we can cannot hear Isla Stowe. So, uh, well, that's an interesting insight uh, into what might, uh, well, what is going to happen. Definitely. But, um, yeah, so I was, I was actually putting my money on a proper, <laughs> you know, tactical sprint <laughs> finish. But um, I think it's also, in a way, a little bit to, you know, maybe even to respect both, of course, Cannondale Vess, uh, Arabe here, because they've been really going well but also to maybe even Candice and Amy. You know, they were in orange all week long. And, uh, you know, and Kim and Vera know that they, they have it. And, uh, you know, they're happy about, you know, being the winners of the race, but I'm not going to, you know, 
to a massive uh, scene at the finish line. Yeah, they're, they are very good friends of uh, these two riders, Amy and uh, Candice as well, and uh, they'll have uh, s sympathy. They know it can hap could have happened to them any time as well. Uh, Vera had a fall earlier in the stage, on stage one. She had another one uh, on the, the uh, Queen stage. So uh, she was, uh, yeah, the way the cards fall, uh, they can fall against her for you, and they were in her favor. This is Wakefield and Lil, third on the uh, stage at the moment and second on general classification by 25 minutes. That lead turned over yesterday uh, when they lost 39 minutes. They were 13 minutes ahead going into uh, yesterday's stage and uh, it all uh, turned on its head. It certainly did and the jerseys also turned. We saw uh, Vera Lorza and Kim Lacord wearing those Apps Africa jerseys and uh, in fact the jerseys, they weren't the leaders in the, jer in the jersey competition but uh, with the deferment of the jerseys Priority, of course, is the Chivita orange jerseys, which are now worn by Lawson and Lacourt. So they've done a bit of a swap, um, but uh, the uh, pairing of uh, Wakefield and Lil, they'll be uh, excited to wear the jerseys, but uh, it's going to be hard for them to put the disappointment behind them. We've heard, we, we, the whole week has told the story that travails the highs and lows of the Apsa Cape Epic, no team in the entire race characterizes that more than Wakefield and Lil. Uh, the, we have to go back a couple of uh, a couple of weeks to say that if anyone were to have told Wakefield or Lil that they would be running second at the Absa Cape, they'd be going to the grand finale, they would take it, but uh, still tantalizingly close to that uh, victory. Well, uh, Vera and. Uh Kim uh, riding towards glory here at the Absa Cape Epic. Meanwhile, Stenberg and uh, Calderon, uh, well, a bit of glory for them after a really tough week. They've settled into the Absa Cape Epic and I think uh, laying the groundwork for uh, potential uh, uh, big things to come in the future perhaps here for this pair. They are prepared to uh, if they can come back and uh, really uh, have a full assault on the uh, overall title. So they're on the uh, grounds of Drakenstein uh, Correctional Services now, our leading uh, women's teams. The orange jersey smiles from uh, Kim Lacourt, Vera Law, so they know. Keep it safe for the next uh, 10 kilometers or so, and they will be the champions of 2023. It is uh, all unfolding here at Val de Vie and the Absa Cape Epic. Uh, the look on the face of uh, Kim Lacourt. No doubt this pair will have a chance. There's uh, Connie Lawza, it's uh, Vera's husband, Vera Adrian she was, and uh, Connie and Vera have been together for a number of years now. Nicole Cast is just behind there. They celebrations, and uh, Connie, in fact, was a last minute entry into the event. He rode with Fla Franz Klaas, his partner pulled out uh, on the Thursday before the race started. So. Uh, Connie just uh, roped in, not a bad uh, rider to have as your partner, the Swiss marathon champion. And uh, they have uh, rolled across the line, Connie and uh, Franz Klaas, today to complete their journey. But uh, Con uh, Connie will be delighted, absolutely brimming with excitement at the thought that uh, his wife is going to be the champion here at uh, 2023 Zapsa Cape Epic. It's uh, as uh, Annika has alluded to, this is the title that you want to win as a marathon race, as a stage race, as a team, uh, this is the one you focus on. Definitely. Um, this is a challenge uh, like no other, and it's uh, super prestigious to, to do well at these races because uh, it's definitely not easy and it, uh, it means a lot to these riders. It really opens uh, you know, doors to, to next level things. So uh, for sure, these riders, uh, they will be super emotional and super happy when they cross the finish line because it means so much more than just, you know, this race. It, it really sets up uh, things uh, differently for the future. I mean, elaborating a little bit on that, I mean, when you won your first steps at Cape Epic, your second, how did that affect you as a professional, in your professional capacity as an athlete? I mean, you were racing and winning races as a, as a cross-country race and, and world title. Did this 
make a big impact on your life? Definitely, it created a lot more uh, attention, you know, just around me as a as a cyclist, and also I was uh, relatively new with the within the you know the the cycling brand of Specialized at the at that at this point, and for sure, no, you know, when you do well at these events, it it opens up doors and. Uh, you know, it really defines you and what you are capable of. So for sure, it did. It meant a lot to me. Well, that's uh, what it is. Winning the Sapsa Cape Epic, uh, select few riders get the opportunity to uh, don that uh, orange jersey at the end of the week, and uh, very, very select. I think only 26 women have uh, have uh, worn that jersey, and uh, now there'll be uh, two new uh, riders who will be. Crown champions at the uh, Absa Cape Epic. They're closing in on the finish. On the road to Val V, this is our third place team on the stage, second on general classification in the women's CM.com uh, women's category pursuit of the orange leaders jersey. It's been on the shoulders of three different teams this week. The uh, 91 Songo specialized pair won the prologue and then Amy Wakefield and Candace Lill won stage one and looked after that jersey, wore that jersey all the way through to stage six. And that was yesterday when the disaster struck and uh, they lost 39 minutes and their 13 minute lead to Vera Lossa and Kim LaCourt who are now in these uh, CM.com orange leaders jerseys and on their way to the uh, glory here at Val de Vie. They're not uh, perhaps going to have it all their own way in trying to win the stage, but uh, that will probably be, be uh, we, we've heard a little bit earlier that uh, the, there was a discussion between the two teams, Canada Vas Arabe and Efficient Infinity Insure, and it looks like Canada Vas Arabe are going to take the stage win. But you never know what that exactly what that discussion was about. It may have been along the lines of, what about we have a sprint finish and see who uh, who wins it? Um, but uh, we'll wait and see. Well, we've, we've seen the, uh, the leading women's team, the CM.com women's category teams, riding through the 70-kilometer mark and already passing that with not far to go, less than 10 k's to go still. And uh, it's Canadel Vas Arabe riding with Efficient Infinity Insure together, cooperating well. Uh, still unconfirmed as to whether or not they'll be sprinting for that finish. But uh, in third spot on the day, on today's stage, eFortnet Seattle Coffee Company's Amy Wakefield, Candice Lill, passing through that time check six minutes and 52 seconds back. And uh, still no sign yet of the uh, uh, the uh, the team of uh, Gomez Villafana and Katrina Nash, 91 Songo Specialized. We did see them pass through there at the 63-kilometer mark at... Uh, 14 minutes and 16 seconds back. So that third spot looks still, uh, it still looks likely that they'll hold on to that third spot on overall. And uh, Amy Wakefield and Candace Lill look uh, firmly in charge of that second spot overall. But uh, the race definitely looks like it belongs to Lacourt and Lawza. Strong, riding strongly at the front end of the field in their orange Chivita leaders jerseys. Meanwhile, riders rolling into the finish here, exhausted, uh, relieved, exhilarated, excited, all uh, manner of uh, emotions, no doubt, rolling through these riders as they complete their journey at the Absa Cape Epic. That looks like it's Tom Bodner and uh, his partner, uh, Jan Vittar, just rolling into the finish. But it is a celebration for every single rider here, the opportunity to... Uh, uh, pick up the medal and just feel uh, some uh, tangible uh, uh, result as you get to the end of this journey. Six, uh, hundred, oh five, uh, 658 kilometers and uh, uh, eight days of the most uh, brutal mountain bike uh, riding throughout uh, the week. And the weather, the, the intense winds they had on the first day at Hermanus that buffeted the riders up to 90 kilometers an hour upon rotary drive as they made their way back to the finish. Of course, then there's two stages of the most torrential rain, rivers, the trail turned into rivers uh, up on Grunlandberg and uh, the mud and slippery conditions of yesterday contrived to make it one of the very toughest days in uh, the Absa Cape Epic history. Steinberg and Calderon uh, now together with uh, Vera Lossa and uh, Kim Lacourt. They're really on the charge here. You can see the Cannondale uh, Vas Arabe. And 
they just hammering away. It looks as, as though they are not too bothered with pulling the orange uh, jerseys uh, with them to the finish line. And uh, I'm pretty sure for Cannondale, that's Araby. You know, this is kind of almost like a stepping stone towards, you know, something bigger, something, you know, great results uh, in oh. this race. Oh, quick fall here. Hopefully nothing happens. But you can see this is why conditions today, they are they're tricky. I mean, the sun is out, things are seemingly drying up, but there's still so much water and so much, you know, mud on the course. And it just takes one of these areas with a little bit of shade where the sun really hasn't, you know, dried up uh, things just yet. And then you can uh, slide out. And remember, t by now, riders are so fatigued. It's uh, eight long days where you have to, s to stay so focused the whole time. It's definitely not easy. And you can see here now the elastic is, is starting to stretch a little bit here between the teams and the uh, question is, it is uh, what will happen now. But it looks like the orange jerseys are not going to take it any advantage of uh, this situation. They're happy to just kind of sit in and uh, ride you know, comfortably in second position here today and all the way to the finish line with Cannondale, <coughs> uh, Bas Arabe. Looks like they're not trying to 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 get away from them just staying with them the whole time and now it's all back together and uh, hopefully nothing seriously happened here meanwhile onto the fields come the uh, NTT uh, masters uh, leaders Carl Platt and uh, Tommy Mizza and behind them the uh, amateur leaders in the first ever uh, amateur men's and women's amateur category that uh, was added this year. So uh, Carl Platt and Tommy Moser, the uh, winners of the NTT Masters. They had a ding-dong battle initially in the first uh, few days with Mike Posthumus and Craig, Craig Uriah. But, well, Carl Platt is a legend here at the, uh, the Absa Cape Epic, winner of the very first event back in 2004. And, well, he's lost none of his competitive edge, just loving it here, uh, winning the uh, Masters, the NTT Masters, and a celebration for them. And just behind them, well, the first time for this pair, Ian Boswell and Mitchell Docker, Digger and Doughboy, the uh, Australian and American uh, combination, and they have taken the amateur category and uh, have ridden very, very solidly throughout this week in their very first Absa Cape Epic experience. And uh, Carl Platt and uh, Tom and Fisser, Misser, um, but they were riding in the stage with uh, Pavel Gonda and Jan Fisnar, the Czech pair, and uh, just so they could have that celebration as they crossed the line, he uh, let the uh, Czech pair continue in Carl Platt, and uh, Tommy Messer could, uh, as we said, just have a have a moment and uh, celebrate as they cross the line and enjoy and savor that moment. Carl Platt has enjoyed and savored many moments crossing the line. And, uh, we also, as we said, we spotted uh, the uh, in the amateur category the first time we've introduced this category at the race. We've seen this category at the race. Uh, Oliver Munich and Rogan Smart winning the stage, and uh, Mitch Docker and Ian Boswell passing, crossing the line 35 seconds back on the day, but winning the overall. Meanwhile, we are getting towards the last uh, kilometer or so of the women's race, the CM.com women's race, and uh, it's down to the uh, stage win here. We know now uh, that uh, Vera Lossa and uh, Kim Lacourt are on their way to uh, glory here in the Absa Cape Epic. What a fantastic uh, moment this will be for the Namibian and the uh, Mauritian. And we can see here now on the trails uh, of LDV, just the outskirts of LDV here. It's uh, sneaking and winding its way all the way to the finish line. And I remember coming here as a rider, you know that V is the finish line. And when you enter these trails, you're sp by now you're so tired, you're so fatigued. And uh, sometimes, you know, it seems like a never ending, like, <laughs> uh, like the kilometers just like snailing their way, uh, passing by by a, a very slow pace. And um, it just says something about, you know, the impact that the, this race uh, has on your body is uh, definitely by no means a walk in the park. Every rider have to work so extremely hard to make it to the finish line. And um, well, kudos to all the all the, the riders uh, uh, making it through, and especially to those uh, racing at the very sharp end of the field, because it's definitely not easy. That it isn't. As uh, they are winding their way to the finish, let's go down to the finish line and hear from our amateur league winners. Yeah, yeah. 
Mitchell Anthony, um, how good does that champagne taste after eight days out there in the African wild? Oh, it's delicious. I didn't drink water for like the last 30K, so I was pretty <laughs> thirsty. Um, no, I mean, what a great day to finish. I mean, beautiful trails, sunshine. Oh, last two days have been tough, but like today, just like you kind of forget about it after a day like today. It was quite a competitive in your category there. You lots of competitive racing towards the end of the stages. I think that's the only way you'd want to do it. Whatever field you're in, you still want to race. And to have the competition makes the stages go better. And a nice rivalry and a more like a joint feeling when you finish this. Hey, we all did it together. Great. It was great to have you guys here. Enjoy the rest of the celebrations. Thank you so much. Mitch Docker and Ian Boswell, uh, the uh, uh, American-Australian uh, combination. Both have uh, ridden with some distinction on the world tour over the years. Uh, Boswell, uh, perhaps uh, at the age of 32, still could uh, go out there. He's doing a lot of gravel racing in the United States, whilst uh, Mitch Docker is retired, living in Melbourne, and uh, carving out a little career for himself uh, as uh, a podcaster. But uh, certainly riding and uh, getting a first experience at the Apsa Cape Epic here. Uh, and I wonder if he'll come back and uh, take it on. So this is uh, the culmination of uh, eight days of incredibly hard riding by our riders, particularly here, the CM.com women. Canada Vas Arabe up the trail just by a couple of meters ahead of the overall leaders, Vera Loza and Kim Lacourt. making any mistakes. We did see a slight uh, washout and a fall from one of the Canada, Canada out of a uh, riders, but uh, no damage done. And it looks like that little uh, conference that they had back down the trail is playing out now as they are going to take uh, this last little turn off the trail across uh, the tar and then they'll head on to the uh, green lawns of the uh, Val de Vie estate. Up they go on to the uh, second of the polo fields, the grass bank on the right-hand side, the avenue of uh, trees. It's a rehearsal for that uh, last uh, avenue. It is Steenberg and Calderon of Canada Vas Arbe. And their first Apsa Cape Epic experience, they uh, have been on the podium a couple of days in a row, and now they're finding themselves right at the top step on this stage. Yes, and the... the uh Steinberg and Calderon, they've really found uh, a great pairing. The uh, two of them, uh, some great, uh, they've got a really good cohesion. They've been riding extremely well together, both former national champions and current national champions, and uh, really focusing on stage racing. And they are very much uh, the, the pairing that say themselves they get better as the race goes on, and they are proving it and looking highly likely for a stage win the prestigious stage win, the grand finale of the Apsi Cape Epic. It's a stage prestigious for any rider, even just to finish on the podium. And they are storming to uh, career highlights, you could say, in their careers as mountain bike stage racers and as mountain bikers and even cyclists. Calderon also a road cyclist. And she has uh, been, she was the 2021 Colombian marathon champion. But uh, the big prize, the biggest prize in mountain bike stage racing is the leaders jerseys uh, the orange leaders jerseys and that is uh, due to their consistency all week and uh, fantastic performance by kim lacourt vera Lorza. they are uh, just meters away from glory at valdevi at the finish line well just the most incredible performance by this uh, pair they are very good friends they uh, have ridden with different partners in the past, but just three Apsa Cape Epics between them before they came here, and are now riding to glory as a combination. Whilst uh, up front, they've allowed this pair to go. The, they've stuck to their the deal that was no doubt struck on the road there, that uh, Calderon and Sienberg would take the stage win and uh, allow the uh, orange jerseys to roll over the line and celebrate their achievement. But here are Calderon uh, and uh, Greta Sinberg, Canada Vas, Arabe. They've got stronger and stronger through the week. And uh, they will finish uh, probably outside the top three, but uh, they will celebrate richly and well-deservedly 
because this is a very, very strong end to the eight days of the Absa Cape Epic for Greta Steinberg and uh, Monica Calderon. That's what it means to this pair as they'll come across the line to take the stage honors. A few meters behind them, this is Efficient Infinity Insure. As the stage win goes to Calderon and Steinberg on the grand finale. But a few meters behind them in the uh, CM.com orange leaders jerseys, the final few meters from uh, Vera Lossa and Kim LeCourt, who will be crowned at the end of this stage, the winners of the 2023 Absa Cape Epic. Uh, great friends they are, and uh, they have just reached the pinnacle of their mountain bike careers so far for this pair. A remarkable week's riding, a uh, three stage wins and second on this final day, but most importantly, they will hold on to those orange jerseys and be crowned champions. We just saw a glimpse of the blood on the arm of uh, Greta Stenberg. She went down in the last few kilometers and uh, managed to avert the disaster. We've seen so much happen in the CN.com women's category race. It's just been up and down for so many of these teams and uh, just uh, still managing to hold it together. The uh, Cannondale Vass uh, Arabay team just uh, pulling out a result and most likely, as we said, the highlight of their career. But really the day belonging to Vera Lorza and uh, Kim Lacourt sharing the champagne, <laughs> not wanting to miss out on the uh, taste of champagne. A huge celebration. Teresa Ralph, a well-known campaigner at the race, sharing the joy with the with the pairing of Vera Lorza and Kim Lacourt, the Mauritian and the Namib Namibian. And, uh, some, a man who's very familiar with celebrating on the line in the grand finale is uh, none other than Bart Brenchens, former Olympic champion, former world champion, riding with uh, his uh, erstwhile partner. Caught the uh, amazing pairing, these two, they've done so well. They've Bart Brenchens has been known to uh, be very hard on his partners, but he's found his match as a Vado, being a worthy partner to the, uh, the legendary Dutch cyclist, the first winner of the uh, Olympic Games held in Atlanta. Yeah, they have now won uh, uh, Brenchens' ninth title across uh, three categories, and uh, as a Vado has won seven across uh, two categories. Uh, his third Grand Master, he's won five, four uh, Master titles as well. Brenchens, well, he won the overall title in 2005 at Royal Paulison, and then the Masters and Grand Masters. This is a look at what this means. A win on the Grand Finale for Greta Sinberg and Monica Calderon at Canada Vass uh, Arabe. A, a really top class ride today. They stuck with the leaders throughout and uh, put the finishing touches uh, to a great week for this pair. They should finish fourth on general classification, but uh, the achievement for them is winning the grand finale stage. And they certainly earned it. It was a deal that was perhaps struck on the trails, but they still had to ride 80 kilometers and still had to be in the front. So uh, although the, uh, the deal was that um, they would cooperate well with Lorza and Lacourt, they were right there where it counted. The, uh, the day belongs to the Estonian and the Colombian. The week belongs to the Namibian and the Mauritian, Kim Lacourt and Vera Lossa, the champions uh, of their respective countries and now champions of the Absa Cape Epic. Uh, Vera Lossa in the white helmet and uh, Kim Lacourt, uh, just broadest of smiles. So, so good to see this all African pair winning the uh, title here at the Absa Cape Epic. Uh, well, a, a manner in which one could not have uh, guessed would happen. It was just the most cruelest of things to have happened to Amy Wakefield and Kim and uh, Candice Little yesterday. Uh, broke a rear wheel on uh, Amy Wakefield's uh, bike, and as a result, they lost uh, their overall lead, which had going into the stage was 13 minutes, and uh, they started a day in second place, 25 minutes down. So there was absolutely no way they were going to make up that time unless uh, a similar fate befell the orange jerseys. But here they are, Candice Dill and uh, Amy Wakefield. As we've said, uh, well, they weren't due to ride together in this event. Both had uh, other plans. 
Uh, Mariska Strauss was going to ride with Candice Lill, and that uh, fell by the wayside when Strauss took uh, ill, a long-term illness that has uh, kept her off her bike for some time. And uh, Irina Little Swap uh, hurt her hand in a race uh, just uh, a couple of weeks ago in uh, Europe and let Amy Wakefield know that she wouldn't be able to ride. And they had to make a plan, and this is the plan they made. Well, they've had a glorious week. Just uh, unfortunately for them, they're not going to win the race, but they will finish second. Let's go down and hear from today's stage winners in the CM.com women's race. Monica and Greta, how are you feeling right now? It's amazing. I mean, uh, it's uh, our first season together. It's first epic for us. And uh, to win the uh, grand finale, it's something uh, really special for us. <laughs> and how were the tactics out there today? Actually, uh, there wasn't much tactic. We just both felt uh, really, really good today. And we had no, no mechanical issues. And uh, we just uh, started good with the, with the leaders. And uh, yeah, suddenly others dropped and we just kept going. And uh, we tried to be as much as uh, possible in front. And uh, I think it was good, uh, good to be in front. So. And uh, yeah, at the end, we didn't even have to spin, so it was <laughs> good for us. <laughs> and Monica, what does this mean to you? Diga no, digamos que hoy en la etapa, pues lo importante era cuidarnos, ver cómo nos sentíamos. Afortunadamente, las dos nos sentimos muy bien, nos sentimos increíbles para ir a full desde el comienzo hasta el final. Y pues nada, estamos muy contentas de que se nos haya dado la etapa hoy. And what does this mean to your f future, to your career? What? ¿Qué significa para tu carrera? Uf, es un logro bastante importante. La Cape es una carrera de las más importantes del mundo de maratón. Y haber logrado hoy una, un primer lugar en una etapa como estas es algo que marcará la vida y la historia. And you are going so strong here towards uh, the end of the week. Will we see you next uh, next year? Yeah, we, for sure we hope to be uh, back. We uh, got really good experience this year. I mean, uh, it was our first, so I think uh, next time we already know a bit more what to expect. Maybe maybe next year a bit less mud, <laughs> but we manage actually the muddy stages quite well. So yeah, for sure we want to uh, be back and uh, I hope that we go uh, come together. <laughs> we hope so too. Well, good luck and uh, yeah, massive congratulations. Uh, it's a big thing what you've done so go enjoy thank you <laughs> Crossing the line, uh, CM.com uh, women's uh, second place overall, Amy Wakefield and Candice Lill of E4.net, Seattle Coffee Company. And they finish seven minutes and 28 seconds down, third on the day, second on general classification at the end of a massively uh, emotional week for the pair. Uh, courageous performance by them and courageous performance by every single rider who took on the challenge of the 2023 Absa Cape Epic some uh, 560 teams still making their way towards the finish here and the grand finale at Valdevi. It started at Mirandal, it ends here at uh, uh, Valdevi, and another glorious edition. Weather played its role, emotion and the mechanicals also played a role, but it has been a fantastic week at the Absa Cape Epic in 2023. 2024 is year 20, it's going to be a vintage one. Uh, look forward to that next year.
So we're back at uh, Val de Vie for the uh, culmination of eight days of uh, untamed mountain biking. It really has been the race that measures all this year. It has tested riders physically, emotionally, mentally. It's tested combinations. It really has been uh, a deep examination of uh, uh, human uh, character and personality and perseverance and physical uh, effort as well. And uh, this is what it means to these riders as they cross the line here at uh, Val de Vie. An enormous uh, effort by every single one of them. As our Xaro RMB pair of uh, William uh, Majapolo and Obvious Corombi uh, raise their bikes in the air. They were second overall at the start of the day in their category. And uh, we wait to see if uh, that stays uh, as it is. I think it may well be because uh, I think the overall leaders may well be in already but uh, what an achievement the Xara category well it uh, is a category that uh, is uh, open to riders under the age of 26 from uh, previously disadvantaged communities in south africa and uh, it was very competitive this year looked like the toyota 91 specialized uh, team uh, won that but we will confirm that from casa and uh, malo but uh, we'll Gakeni, beg your pardon, but we'll confirm that once we have uh, that uh, with us. But a really fantastic emotional journey this has been for all these riders. But, uh, yeah, it's okay, Pepe, as it always is. That uh, medal that uh, is presented at the end of the uh, race to all these riders. Uh, only a rider who has completed this Apsa Cape Epic can genuinely uh, uh, feel what it's like to uh, receive that medal put yourself through not uh, just yourself perhaps your family through an enormous amount of uh, uh, commitment and effort as uh, Loris Toma and uh, Micheli Galina roll across the line uh, they have uh, found themselves on the podium in uh, the uh, Grand Masters they are second to Brenchens and Azevedo who have completed their journey and all these riders very much in the uh, uh, top uh, 200 teams in the Absa Cape Epic. So highly, highly uh, committed and uh, well-prepared athletes ahead of the Absa Cape Epic. And uh, they've managed to negotiate uh, their way through all the potential pitfalls of uh, the journey from Mirandal to Val de Vie via Hermanus and Oakvalier and uh, Lawrenceford. Celebrations for the Chileans, Diego Ortiz and Lucas Wolf uh, of a specialized Chile as they roll across the line in uh, just about uh, four hours, four hours and 25 seconds of riding from uh, Lowensford. That is a highly, highly efficient ride today. As uh, we look uh, around at the uh, conditions today, clear and sunny. Uh, finishing uh, just ahead of them, finally, Adrian Boisius, the young Frenchman, finished on his own. Uh, as Tristan Nokia had ridden ahead of him. So they will uh, drop uh, well down. I think they'll pick up an hour's time penalty for that uh, separation, time separation. That's uh, what happens. A two minute time separation gets penalized by an hour. This is a lap then pair coming into the finish to celebrate. Riders from all over the world. This is the pinnacle of the Epic Series, pinnacle of global mountain biking. And uh, every single amateur aspires, amateur mountain bike aspires to come and ride the Absa Cape Epic and uh, well the professionals they aspire to win the uh, Absa Cape Epic and this year that uh, honor belongs to Matt Beers and Chris Blevins of uh, Toyota Specialized 91. Well, earlier we would have seen the, the, um, the pairing of uh, we just saw the uh, Brazilian pairing of Machado and uh, Coelho coming in and uh, fantastic performance from riders from all over the world. We've seen from Brazil, we saw earlier the uh, Latvian flag being flown with pride and uh, Chilean, Chileans, the Italians, there will be a massive party this evening as they, uh, as they can celebrate and sealed off the uh, 2023 campaign at the Absa Cape Epic. Let's go down to the finish and hear from our overall winners in the CM.com women's category. Kim, Vera, how are you feeling 
right now. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, we did it. Yeah, we did it. I don't have any words. I don't know. It's, yeah. it's an amazing feeling. I mean, it's been such a rough week. We're going through such dark places. Yeah, and then if it re it's rewarded with this, it's, yeah, it's nice. <laughs> Nobody could have expected this race. It was so drama dramatic, and it just kept on being like super dramatic. What uh, will this uh, mean for your future? Uh, I think we haven't thought about that just yet. <laughs> I think we first need a week or two to to get back into a normal rhythm again and let it sink in, and then yeah, we'll take it from there. But I'm sure it will be a big stepping stone in both our careers. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. We'll take it from there. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. I, I know how you feel. It's all good. Um, and we saw towards the end of the stage, you you had a little chat with uh, Cannondale. Can you elaborate a little bit on that? Yeah, they were racing a good race today, and it's, I mean they were strong today. We weren't racing for the stage, but today we were really just keeping it safe and going for the overall. And it's nice that there's other team on the podium as well. So we said if you guys do the work, we will. We'll give you something. Yeah, we basically <laughs> told them not to stress and uh, not to yeah. keep on looking back. We won't sprint them and we won't interfere. They can have the glory and then um, we, we, we agreed that we will let them go in the last kilometers or so and so they can have the glory and all. we all have ours. So. But you, you ladies were still amazing. I mean, you don't, you're not wearing the, the orange jerseys unless you're like a the winner. So massively congrats and we look forward to seeing you here again and go enjoy. Thank, Thank you, you so much. <laughs> well done ladies, it's been some week. Did you expect uh, to be here now uh, being like in second place on the GC at this very moment? Um, no, yesterday I must say my thoughts were like, I was so bleak, I was like, I did not come here to be big roles, I came here to win. <laughs> And then I just saw the messages on Instagram and, the, and I was just sobbing and I just thought, you know, the amount of women we both inspired young girls, that's absolutely, like nothing's worth that, you know, like it's really, we've been absolutely touched by the, by the support, but you can't expect, I mean, this is not, you can't make what this up this week, like you can't make it up. <laughs> You have inspired so many people out there, and I know that in you know in the hearts of a lot of the people following the race, you are true champions, and uh, nobody can take that away from you. So, how how are the emotions right now? It's been an insane week. Um, Ames and I have been through all the ups and downs, and um, yeah, looking back, I think this is sport. Eh? Like you've got to take all the highs and the lows, and. You know, we did ourselves really proud. Um, I think in every way we looked after each other. Um, we were amazing teammates to each other. We showed a lot of kindness and, yeah, like inner strength. And I'm really proud of our effort. Yeah, and don't have to keep on, on pushing in the conditions like this. It's uh, definitely easy and uh, everything wants to go on you this weekend. Uh, good luck. You are the true champions and heroes of this race. Nobody can take that away from you. So really go rest up, enjoy, and we look forward to seeing you back again. Yes, we'll be back for we'll sure. Be back. <laughs> Thanks, Annika. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Kim, Vera. A wonderful spirit uh, right there from... Uh, Amy Wakefield uh, yeah. and her partner as uh, we watch riders uh, roll into the finish a couple of Argentines. A little bit early we saw images there of uh, the winners in the Xaro category and uh, there's the mixed winners, Ibon Zugasti and Ali Spirard. They win the uh, green jerseys of the mixed and a little early we saw the Toyota Specialized 91.3 team of Zola Nkakeni and Ntlantla Nkasa. Uh, in celebration with the specialized team. They've had a day, haven't they? They've had a week. Um, uh, Sofia Gomez, Viafana, Katharina Nash have just uh, rolled in uh, to the finish line, 16 minutes behind the uh, winners today. But uh, this is the Argentine pair uh, of Leandro, uh, Leandro Odino and Leonardo uh, Alochis. They've just finished their race. But I'll be a factory. Take the uh, Toyota mixed category. Ibon Zugasti from Spain and Alice Pirard, the uh, Belgian. They are the winners of the Toyota mixed category this year. And uh, Sam Sanders and Rian Vaderman were the team that were chasing them but weren't able to do it uh, today. Riders uh, storming into the finish here, and every rider is celebrating as if they won it because that's what it feels like. As you heard from uh, 
Uh, Amy and uh, Candice, I mean, they have been through so much today and they've had the deep disappointment of losing the jerseys yesterday, but the support from outside of the, uh, the event, from uh, the community around them, from uh, those online and uh, friends and family have uh, galvanized them and uh, made them realize that in fact whatever they've done this week and whatever these riders all of them have done this week it needs to be celebrated in the best possible way because this achieving uh, the uh, finish here is a seriously seriously big achievement thomas frischnick has just finished us gerig his partner they were third in the uh, Grandmasters category at the start of the day. They finished fourth today. Whether they've held on to that, I'm not sure. Oh, the Songo youngsters from just outside Stellenbosch, of course. They are the young uh, children uh, living uh, just outside Stellenbosch who go to the Songo uh, school after school and uh, they do their homework there and then get to ride uh, mountain bikes as well. And uh, many of those youngsters hopefully will be able to uh, be inspired by. Gakeni and Gokasa and, uh, and uh, Nokasa and uh, come and ride the Absecate to pick one day themselves. So, so Matt Beers inspiring youngsters as well, signing autographs for young and old. Beers and Blevins, the champions in 2023, about to get up on the podium here at Val de Vie. Oh, it's wonderful to see mountain bikers. Young and old celebrating the performance of this pair. That's a wonderful sight, young Carla Stumpf there from the Buko team, uh, perhaps uh, waiting her opportunity to come and ride the Absecate Pepeco one day. Sebastian Laus, Eugene Schmunk, German pair getting across the line and finishing their journey. These riders, all uh, highly committed, dedicated. Uh, uh, riders to uh, getting prepared for the absolute Cape Epic and getting the result uh, that they probably desired. Well, they're coming 12th in their category, the Germans, and uh, we've said many times this is the most competitive mountain bike stage race in the world, and not just competitive in the UCI men's and the UCI women's category, the uh, CM.com women's category. The, uh, there are category jerseys across the board, and uh, you can see here the stage results. Uh, Greta Steinberg, Steinberg and uh, Monica Calderon, a fantastic stage win, earning that uh, from their c consistent efforts all week. And Lacourt and Laws are coming in close soon after, but cementing that overall lead. Wakefield and Lil, uh, a podium spot on the final day in uh, Val de Vie and uh, holding on to their second spot overall. Gomez Villafana and Katarina Nash, 16 minutes down in fourth spot. They're unlikely to lose their third place on uh, general classification. Steinberg and uh, Calderon were well over an hour back, and in fact, there's confirmation of that. So, yeah, they finish uh, nearly two hours down, uh, Steinberg and Calderon. They won't mind that because they won the grand finale and a couple of podium finishes on their way uh, to Val de Vila. Court and Lossa, 32 minutes and 24 seconds over Wakefield and Lil. Four riders from the African continent in the uh, top two places on the uh, Absa Cape Epic is a phenomenal achievement. Gomez, Viafan and Nash, well, they won the prologue, but I'm afraid from then on uh, it uh, went downhill for the 91 Songo Specialized team. They weren't able to stay with uh, initially E4.net, Seattle Coffee Co. and then uh, Latley, of course, Efficient Infinity Insure. Steinberg and Calderon Martinez in fourth place for Canada Vas Arabe. Celebrations though all around. Uh, it's been a remarkable day so riding uh, and a remarkable week across uh, all eight days. And there's still uh, the journey it continues. A look back at uh, how the uh, racing unfolded today in the men's race. Remember that the yellow jerseys, Nino Schurter and his partner Andre Frischknecht had uh, one minute and 32 seconds of a lead over Chris Blevins and Matt Beers of Toyota Specialized 91. And initially they put the power down on the climb up to the saddle in uh, the Helderberg Basin out of Lawrenceford. Blevins looking strong as anything. He's had a great back end of the week. And uh, they were putting the pressure on uh, Orbea Liet Speed Company, for whom it appeared Lucas Baum was suffering. And they eventually were with uh, the uh, Scott Tram MTB pair as up the road went Beers and Blevins. And they really tried to take the fight to the yellow jerseys as early as they possibly could. And since if there was a weakness, they could uh, take a hold. 
plummeting down the other side of the saddle. Slight overshoot from uh, Chris Blevins, but no problem at all. Their skills supreme. Look how they deal with the ruts and uh, the holes in the terrain. No problem at all. They swept through the Dornier Wine Estate with a roundabout of a 30 second advantage. At this stage, they were still in second place on general classification. But as the race uh, started to uh, uh, progress it was clear that the yellow jerseys were going to be uh, under severe pressure from uh, the uh, pair of Blevins and Beers who uh, at this stage were just a couple of seconds ahead of the hard charging or beer Leard speed company they had to make up over five minutes and 32 seconds if they were going to win this race uh, that was a tall order and uh, well the g-spot trail was the playground for this man the very best of them all, Nino Schurte. Wonderful to watch. And so the uh, second big ascent of the day was another area where the GC could uh, take a big turn. The climb up Botmas Corp. It didn't really make too much of an impact on uh, the top uh, leading teams here of beer as well as specialized and uh, the team racing with them was Singer Racing as they came down off the mountain but time checks were being fed uh, through and it was clear here that the yellow jerseys were over a minute and 30 seconds back which at that stage had put the Canada pair in the, the uh, specialized pair in the lead as uh, they were chasing down another uh, looks like a hare on the trail and in fact it did come behind Nino Schurter so Schurter looked as though he just overshot that switchback and uh, he was all right no damage done and he and Andre Schuschen could continue their chase but the chase pretty much was done because up front it was the uh, Toyota Specialized 91 team as well as Aubert it and uh, they were absolutely hammering it a last ditch attempt by Georg Egger and Lucas Baum here on the flat roads the other side of Boschendal to try and escape and break the elastic band it didn't happen the stage looked as though it was going to be Singer uh, racing but Martin Fry went down in uh, a heap on the grass lawns of Val de Vie. Simon Sibjan couldn't see him and the stage went the way of Obea Liet Factory Racing. Two grand finale stage wins in a row, but this one tinged with a little disappointment. They weren't going to take the overall. That belonged to this pair. Chris Plevins, the United States, South Africa's marathon champion, Matt Beers, a second time winner alongside the American who won for the first time. And uh, disappointment for Martin Fry. He was uh, looking at a stage win. Unfortunately, it all ended uh, in a bump on the grass and uh, he would uh, finish third place. Schurter and Frischnecht, well, it wasn't to be today for this pair. They lost over three minutes on the general classification, in fact, over four minutes, and uh, they would finish uh, in third place. The time ticked by a minute and 32 seconds and the realization that Chris Blevins and Matt Beers were the champions of the Absa Cape Epic in 2023. The champagne flowed, the smiles and the celebrations began for the Toyota Specialized 91 team. To the uh, CM.com women's race and uh, in the orange jerseys after a tumultuous uh, stage six uh, for Amy Wakefield and Candice Lill, it was Vera Loss and Kim Lacourt who had the race lead for the first time in the, the entire week and they had a comfortable 25 minute lead over Wakefield and Lil and uh, they set about consolidating that by uh, just hanging with uh, the uh, red jerseys Wakefield was suffering today Lil was doing her bit to try and help her through the stage wearing the Absa African jerseys on loan from Loza and Lil because they were the uh, Loza and uh, Lacourt because they were of course the uh, leaders in that category uh, getting past a rider there who'd lost his pedal it uh, seemed but it was going to be Canadel Vas Arabe who took the fight to uh, efficient infinity ensure Loza and Lacourt for the stage win today fourth overall on general classification and well out of contention in that category and they were prepared to uh, gamble it all and try and take a stage win the g-spot trail again uh, a thrilling descent for the riders as they came uh, down into uh, Stellenbosch the orange jerseys though were hanging on to Canada Vas Arabe as they snaked around the uh, the Bergpart trails here there was no question that uh, 
Vera Lossa and Kim LeCourt were approaching this with a, a safety first caution uh, was the watchword for them. Don't make any mistakes that could compromise their position as the race leaders. Calderon and Stenberg on the podium of the last two days. Here was a chance for the Colombian and the Estonian to uh, find some glory on the final day. The sky trail that traverse above the uh, Banok Valley. Again, nothing could separate this uh, quartet of riders. And uh, sooner or later, it was going to come down to which uh, team had the legs, the desire to win the stage. Well, it uh, transpired that there was a little bit of a collaboration between uh, the uh, Efficient Infinity Insure team. They wanted to guarantee their place uh, as the overall winners and uh, didn't want to take any risks and get involved uh, in a risky, potential risky sprint finish as they flew down the trails of Old Bethlehem Farm. And one last uh, drag up the mountains here. Legs were tired. It has been a brutally hard week, an emotional week for everyone concerned. But uh, Canada uh, Vas Arabe could sense that they had an opportunity to take a stage win here. This is Lossa and Lacourt that had the chat and uh, they were prepared to let Canada Vas Arabe take the stage win. And uh, the Colombian and the Estonian set the pace as long as uh, they did that then uh, Lawson and Lacourt would not threaten uh, their uh, position at the front the uh, Berg River flowing strongly after the rains and uh, no problem at all for these riders just uh, making sure they they got through that safely finish uh, around the corner for this lot and a slight uh, mishap for Vera Lawson in the thick sand yeah, conditions have been the heavy rain and in the shady areas perhaps it was a little bit damper and uh, uh, just sucking the tires down into the into the sand and also here yeah, in fact for Stenberg I think it was who went down uh, just uh, really within the last two kilometers of the lawns of uh, Val de Vie. but uh, that little sign you knew was a celebration, a mute celebration for, for the time being now between Kim Lacourt and Vera Lossa. They had let the Canada Vas Arabe team head up the road and uh, they would cross the line to take their first stage win at the APSA Cape Epic in their first uh, effort here at the Epic. But it was the team of Vera Lossa and Kim Lacourt of Efficient Infinity Insure who raised their hands in celebration of uh, the overall victory. Second place for Candace Dill and Amy Wakefield. What a week this pair have had. Courage, determination, disappointment, and uh, dark places were visited, but ultimately uh, they finished in second. But the champagne flowed for Efficient Infinity Insure. Kim Lacourt and Vera Lossa. The emotions perhaps got the better of them as one could expect, and uh, certainly uh, uh, this has been an emotional week and ending with great celebration for Efficient Infinity in Sure. So this is uh, the scene here at uh, Val de Vie. Beautiful uh, riders, supporters, people arriving to welcome in their riders. And they'll be coming in here through the afternoon because uh, the rest of the field, and we've only perhaps got uh, the first 150 teams in, so uh, a lot more, 450 odd teams still to come in to the finish. We await the podium uh, celebration of both the men's and women's categories here. Just coming across the line uh, quite recently. We've seen uh, Sarah Hill and uh, her partner. Uh, she's riding with uh, Hans and Pretorius as well as uh, Yolanda de Villiers and Steph Walters riding in the African category for best of performance. Well, Neil, it's uh, always a, an occasion here at Val de Vie, a celebration, an emotional one as well for everyone. Well, we've been coming here since uh, 2017 and we've seen some spectacular stage wins uh, at the top end of the, uh, of the sport. The riders best are pulling through here. We've seen uh, some r just uh, the celebrations of heroes welcome at the grand finale in Val de Vie, not just for the top professionals, but also for uh, the great many amateurs that will be uh, pulling in and uh, over the years the family members have gathered to wait for their uh, wait for the, the, the 
people who are riding the race, the, 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 the athletes, it's competitive all the way through, all the way right down to the, uh, almost the, you could say, to the uh, back end of the field, who are not just chasing a win or a, uh, a stage, but they're also chasing that uh, maximum a lot of time. And I don't think there's any danger of the riders uh, not making it today. The conditions have been fantastic. And conditions, it looks like the uh, spirit of uh, Orbi Elliott uh, Speed Company have been raised. They're a little bit uh, bittersweet for them. They did win the stage. It's a prestigious stage win for the Germans. Um, last year, they, uh, they, they won coming into uh, Valdivie in 2022. And uh, spare a thought for Singer Racing. Yeah. It all looked good for them. Just uh, one small, tiny, but fatal mistake for Martin Fry as the uh, just a few hundred meters from the line just went down, went over the bars. Matt Beers and Chris Blevins happy to let the uh, Speed Company riders uh, take the win. And uh, their work was done throughout the day. They did a tremendous work at the front, cementing their overall lead. Lucas Baum and George Egger, great day out for them. Not as great as they had expected. They had uh, lost the shades of last year in their back of their minds and their dramatic victory taken on the final stage. Today, the stage belongs to them. And they'll look back certainly with uh, fondness, fond memories of uh, a well-fought stage and a and just it was it was all out firepower earlier on and uh, the fastest team won in the end yeah they looked uh, delighted with that stage when yes disappointed they didn't uh, win but uh, i know that was compromised by yesterday's uh, uh, problems but um, you know if this was a uh, uh, an even uh, race would be pretty boring the every team has gone through their trials and tribulations in this uh, race blevins suffered on the first day and uh, on the first stage and they lost some eight minutes seven minutes to the leaders uh, that they they fought back they hung in there they won stages they kept winning stages they kept winning stages five of them in total and put themselves in the picture if something went wrong something went wrong for beer speed company racing when they were in the, the yellow jerseys and uh, capitalized they did the yellow jerseys of uh, of uh, Schurter and Frischnick, they were able to take uh, the lead and uh, they weren't able to sustain that today. And for the second year in a row, the lead changes on the, the final day of the Absecate Epic. Yes, and over just just a shade over four minutes separating first, second and third spot it is unprecedented. This is officially the closest race we've ever seen at the Absecate Epic. Last year, possibly the second closest. And there's one common denominator out of this. And that's the pairing of Lucas Baum and George Egger. They are the protagonists. They have, they now the present and the future of the sport. We expect to see much more of them throughout the years. We can't wait till 2024 to see what they're going to, how they're going to attack the race. And uh, absolute targets on their back. They looked tremendously strong all week, barring yesterday's massive uh, mechanical. They have been uh, protagonists and the biggest threat to the yellow jersey wearers of today. Taking third, and, um, Scott Schramm, spare a thought for Andre Frischnick, who was Dino struggling Schurter. earlier in the stage, Schurter, but uh, still a, an excellent performance by the Swiss riders. Nina Schota, the greatest of all time, and uh, his partner, Andre Frischnick, taking third overall the at the Absecape Epic. The Epic. Not year. quite the uh, middle spot the in the podium that Nina Schota is quite used to, but still should be satisfied with uh, having left all out there on the trails. And second spot, George Egger, Lucas Baum, Orbi Speed Company Racing. Yeah, another dramatic performance all week from this pairing. Well, Egger and Baum, winners last year, second this year. They are an ever-present threat in the Absa Cape Epic. They didn't have an answer today for this pair. Specialized 91. They won the uh, prologue. They got into yellow on the you first day. The they didn't see it again until today. They step up onto the uh, top step. The champions of 2023 Toyota Specialized 91, a first time winner in Chris Blevins, a two time winner now, and the second South African to win the Absa Cape Epic is Matt Beers. The champagne will flow. What celebrations for uh, all three teams. They brought an incredible drama to a wonderful climax here on the uh, Val de Villa Grand Finale stage. And they've delivered uh, huge entertainment, great tactical skill, wonderful on-the-bike skills. 
teamwork and camaraderie. And there they are, the top three, uh, uh, trying to fit on the top step together. Piers and Blevins in the yellow of Toyota Specialized at 91. In second place, uh, Orbea Liet Speed Company, Eger and Baum. And Nino Schurter and Andre Frischnick in third place for Scott Schramm MTB. And what a podium. World champions, current world champions, former world champions, absolute Cape Epic champions, national champions, an illustrious lineup that we've seen at the Absa Cape Epic. As always, this is a gathering of uh, champions across uh, the uh, spectrum in terms of ages and disciplines. Uh, and uh, of course, we've had uh, Vincenzo Nibali riding here, one of the most decorated road racers of all time, a three-time Grand Tour winner, multiple monument winner, and about to, uh, well, he has completed his Absa Cape epic journey alongside Samueli Poro. And uh, at one stage, they're up as high as seventh place on the general classification. And uh, they've uh, completed their ride today. The Italian friends finishing today's stage in uh, 23rd place. A lot of the teams they would uh, have taken today a lot easier knowing that they're getting to the finish. The general classification finishing in 13th place, uh, Poro and uh, Nibali. Behind Ibuka Type Devs, Marco Hubert and uh, Peter Dutoy, who got stronger and stronger through the week, the Ibuka Type Dev pair. But they couldn't get the better of the Paga Eurosteel team of, of Phil Bass and uh, Alexander Miller. Remarkable the, uh, performance again by Philip Bass uh, taking that jersey. We we spent some time with Philip Bass in the, uh, during the week, and we asked him, how many times have you worn the Absic Africa jerseys? He couldn't even remember. Several yeah. was the answer. Yeah, I think he's won it five times, but remember, yeah, he, he's going to wear it probably every day uh, for most of those Absic Cape Epics uh, alongside uh, his partners. But Tays Birkus, most notably, uh, a very, very formidable uh, accommodation they were. So, riders rolling in. We are waiting the uh, podium presentation for the CM.com women's uh, stage. And here it is. This is the uh, stage podium. And uh, smiles all around. You want to be on the podium on any day at the Absolute Cape Epic. But on uh, the grand finale day, well, Candace Hill and Amy Wakefield. What a week they've had. Wow, the South African marathon champion. She won that just a couple of weeks ago, no more than uh, five or six kilometers from where we are today. Candice Leo. Um, Namibian champion Vera Lossa, the Mauritian champion uh, Kim Lacourt of Efficient Infinity Insure in second place. A couple of days on the podium for this pair, but today. It doesn't get better than this. The grand finale victory for the Canadel Vas Arabe pair of uh, Monica Calderon and Greta Stinberg. Calderon from Colombia, Stinberg from uh, Estonia. Celebrations all round for them. Rice staying with the overall leaders throughout today's stage and making sure they get to the finish safe and sound. They did the uh, a lot of the hard work the on the stage, and they were awarded for that hard work by the stage victory. Another pair of delighted riders, exhausted, delighted, relieved, fatigued. They are. They uh, will uh, deserve their celebratory drinks and uh, whatever it is they would like to celebrate with later today because this has been an enormously tough week on the mountain bike every year. It seems uh, it is uh, tough, but it, that, it just presents itself in different ways uh, year in and year out. Uh, and it goes back from out of the field there. You get to feel their emotion <laughs> and get the mud, <laughs> mud on, your, on your clothing. It is pretty muddy out there. Oh, my God, you have no idea. So what <laughs> we see here, you don't really get a feeling of how muddy it is, it is down there. The whole, yeah, it's like a little bit like a muddy swimming pool down there. But riders are happy and really enjoying it that day. I can tell you the, the vibe down there is amazing. It's unlike anything. Electric it is. Uh, it is uh, amazing because every rider who comes in here celebrates as if they have won uh, the Absa Cape Epic. And so they should. 
because in their own uh, the way they have, that uh, medal means so much for these riders. Remember, we've got three riders who are competing their 19th at the Cape Olympics. Mike Nixon, John Gale, and uh, Hanlis Stein. They were still out there. This is the podium for the overall year at the Absa Cape Olympic. Well, they won the prologue. They put themselves in yellow on that day. It is a new combination. The defending champion from last year, Sofia Gomez, via fan, and uh, Katharina Nash from the Czech Republic making her Absa Cape Epic debut. And uh, yes, they won the prologue, but weren't able to sustain the form through the rest of the week. Well, the team that took their jerseys from them on day two, stage one, were Amy Wakefield and Candice Lill, and they held that uh, CM.com leader's jersey until yesterday, the penultimate day, when they overcome with all sorts of mechanical issues that cost them their lead. And that lead was passed on to Efficient Infinity Insure. And uh, the winners of the 2023 Absa Cape Epic, Kim Lacorte and Vera Lossa. Mauritius and Namibia on the top step of the Absa Cape Epic for the first time. And uh, they have done a magnificent job. Three stage wins through the week. And they're confirming it with a uh, second place today and secure in that CM.com women's jersey. Yeah, amazing racing by these ladies. Um, <coughs> the ups and downs, the highs and lows, and everything they had to go through. Um, it's unbelievable. And uh, yeah, I can't begin to imagine what it means <coughs> to these ladies, to the teams, to the sponsors, to the future. It's, uh, it's, it's you know, it's life changing. Selfie time. <laughs> so Candice has got to get this right. There we go. Yeah, wonderful, wonderful uh, scenes here at uh, the Absa Cape Epic. Well, Wakefield and Lil able to put aside the disappointment of losing the jersey. They had over two and a half hours on the trails yesterday to come to terms with it, and they realized uh, their hopes of winning the, the uh, event were pretty much gone. Um, but still, as you heard Amy say at the end of it, they were in a dark place uh, yesterday. Yeah, I mean, <coughs> they started out not expecting much. Then, you know, being in orange and all of a sudden, you know, they were like, oh, we can actually win this. And, you know, going from such low to such high and then such low again, it's uh, <laughs> definitely, it's not easy for your mind. But, you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure they will they have a good support system uh, around them and they, they'll be able to really rise uh, from this. Well, let's go down to the finish riders rolling in. Perhaps the mixed uh, winners, I think, are with uh, Jazz now. All right. Ivan, Alice, congratulations on winning the mixed category. How was your week? Yo, yo. It's been, uh, it's been amazing. Uh, for sure, epic. There's no other word. There are many ups and downs. But we finished uh, in an incredible manner the, the last three days. Uh, we pushed so hard with Ivan. Uh, it's it's been an unforgettable experience and even how does it feel to come back here racing with alice for me it's very special this year uh, cape epic because i'm very crash in january i don't know cape epic year or no i know at least 15 days ago and very very special <laughs> she's a very strong and good Lady, I'm very happy, first in mix, and I'm so happy. Will we see you two back here at the race? Ah, no, no, no bad idea, no? Let's see, let's see. <laughs> yeah, very much, no? <laughs> I'm very happy with she, and I repeat, yeah. Yeah, nice. Okay. We look forward to seeing you again. Congrats, and go celebrate, go spray that champagne. Vamos. Thank you. Champagne, <laughs> Yvonne Zagasti and Alice Pira are talking to uh, Annika down there at the, at the finish. You managed to get out the way of the champagne spray. Yeah, I ran a little bit, David, <laughs> but the mud down there is. I'm, I'm, you know, I, I'm covered in mud now, so I don't know. I think I would have preferred the champagne actually. <laughs> Yes, it's a gumboot day today here at uh, Val de Vie. Uh, copious amounts of rain, and, uh, and yet the, the trails looked as though they held up fantastically, which is a credit to all those trail builders who've made it happen here in the Western Cape again 
on the abs of Cape Epic. You know, we, we ride these trails and these riders enjoy them, but uh, the trail builders have done an enormous amount of work to make sure they're in uh, great condition, uh, notwithstanding the, the weather conditions. Beers and Blevins, the overall winners in the general classification in the men's category in sensational fashion to earn a specialized 91 over, turning a one minute and 32 second lead uh, over the uh, erstwhile yellow jerseys of Schurt and Frischnecht, who had a really tough day today and not only lost the yellow jerseys, they lost, uh, they went down to third place as Egger and Baum hung with Beers and Blevins. They took the stage win and put themselves in second place. They've been here for two years. They've won one. They finished second in the, the next year. This pair, I fancy, could be here for many years to come, uh, making the racing hot and bringing uh, the dynamic type of racing uh, that we've seen this week. It's been fantastic to watch. Well, we certainly hope so. We hope to see the likes of Egger and Baum again because they are absolute animators of any uh, of, of this particular race, the uh, pinnacle of mountain bike stage racing. And in the women's category, almost, or you could say just as exciting with the ups and downs, Lacourt and Lorza emerging the eventual victor victors taking over the race lead yesterday after the disastrous day and Wakefield having broken a wheel and her and Candice Lil coming in second and Gomez Villafana cementing their third spot on overall 91 Songo specialized a solid performance from the uh, from the Argentine and the Czech rider so that's the general classification uh, all the other categories will be finalized as the day progresses those riders are rolling in there are some of them the James is uh, the brothers finishing in third place in the uh, amateur competition 18 minutes between Mitch Docker and Ian Boswell Munich and Smart uh, won today's stage for signal racing but Docker and Boswell dominating the amateur men and uh, Plant and Nissa are taking the NTT Masters uh, category by 20 minutes ahead of Uriah and Posthumous the stage won by Gonda and uh, Fisnar though today the Czech Rockets out at Findel He's the amateur category, a new category here at the uh, Absa Cape Epic, which is uh, fantastic. The uh, mixed, well, it's Augustin Pirard taking the win. Uh, Vedermann and Sanders, 40 minutes back. Lefebvre and uh, Rodinas Pascual in uh, third place in the Toyota mixed. It's been an amazing week. This uh, race is 19 years old, and every year the vintage just gets better and better. Mason Miller winning the Apps African men's uh, category for Paiga Eurosteel by 25 minutes. A fighting performance by the defending champions Joubert and Detroit Bibuka, Typedev and uh, Detroit and Bontekunen for Insect Science uh, taking third place. Well, if you've been with us through the week, I hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks for joining us. Thanks to Neil and to Annika once again for being part of this wonderful show. And uh, they're the trophy holders. Thanks to our chopper pilots, uh, Peter Massain, Skalka uh, Bunzai, our cameramen all around the course, Tim, our drone pilot, and uh, our entire production team here. It's been one hell of a week. Hope you've enjoyed it. The champions say goodbye. Whatever you do, please do not leave because you're awesome. Stick around. The love is brilliant.